A good Friday morning to you and welcome to Mohawk Racetrack, Woodbine Mohawk Park in beautiful Campbellville, Ontario, where we've got a windy but uh, clear and sunny morning for the first full set of baby races for the 2020 season. Greg Blanchard welcoming you to COSA TV's live coverage here this morning on Facebook Live. And uh, as mentioned, it's a windy day. You can probably see in behind me a, a cool and a windy morning for the qualifying session and uh, an exciting time of year. We had a pair of uh, two-year-old qualifying races as part of the regular session yesterday. But today it is a full slate, 14 races coming your way. Uh, under obviously different conditions than uh, we are used to uh, hosting these uh, generally. This would be a beehive of activity on a day like today with uh, excited owners and uh, trainers and, and just excited race fans here to watch but unable to do so. So we are uh, certainly happy to be able to bring you this live coverage here uh, this morning. Uh, partnering up today with uh, Hoofbid. Dot com and uh, again, COSA TV bringing this coverage to you today. Uh, joining me on the broadcast uh, this morning and the man who will describe the action all morning long, Mark McKelvey. Mark, how you doing? You're uh, at least able to stay out of the wind up there. Yeah, I'm nice and warm up here, which is something I would, typically you're too warm up here in the middle of the summer. The heat really beats in on this announcer's booth, but don't need the air conditioning today. I hope you stay warm and I also hope that you don't blow away because uh, these are wins that we don't normally see here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. And like you mentioned, typically the baby races. And uh, for the most part, we've always ever had great weather. So a little different here today. We'll see how it affects some of the youngsters. Looks like that wind will really be blowing into them as they come down the lane. But uh, we'll watch to see if it dies down as the morning goes along. Absolutely. Uh, yesterday, as mentioned, we had uh, just two qualifying races, two-year-old Philly Trotters. Uh, what was your assessment of uh, the youngsters you saw here yesterday? Well, if you're going to look at the lines, I think most people aren't going to see much that's going to catch their eye. But again, it's how they do it. And I thought uh, in those two qualifiers in the morning, I thought we saw a nice performance in the first one from a Carmen Osiello trainee named Keystone Cecilia. She comes up the rail to win the qualifier in the end. The time is 2.04 and 4. That's not going to win you much when it gets down to the action for the real money. But it doesn't mean much in those first qualifiers. I think it's how they do it. It's a learning experience. And I thought for Keystone Cecilia, it was a nice effort. I can't tap all Philly. The second qualifier, we saw the stable.ca all over that one as they pretty much made up the entire field except for one of the seven that came from the John Bax barn. And uh, the winner in that one was a two-year-old trot in Philly named I'm a Lovely Lady. Jane McDonald was in the sulky sitting behind that daughter of my MVP. She goes a mile, a little quicker than the first qualifier, 202 and one, home in 29 and three. She led the entire way and holds on towards the finish line. So again, you can't probably read too much into these, but the one thing that did stand out to me was for the most part, the Phillies were on their best behavior. And uh, again, we don't, we're going to see mostly pacers today. We see a few trotters in the early going, but uh, overall I was impressed with how the trotters kept it together. And as you mentioned, uh, we, we should temper uh, our expectations today in terms of time because of the wind, unless it dies down, uh, uh, you know, still uh, plenty of time here this morning for, for that to happen, and we hope it does. But uh, the temperature is, is quite a bit cooler uh, today as well. So just keep that in mind today, and, uh, you know, we'll be watching uh, uh, the performances closely, and uh, we've got our eye on certainly some uh, exciting prospects here today. Uh, let's take a look at one of them. Uh, you know, we're, we're anticipating all of these horses and, and it's uh, unknown territory we don't know what to expect from them but uh, one colt in particular will be uh, a headliner this morning uh, based on his record yearling price from uh, this past fall Marlboro Sealster the highest price yearling ever sold at auction in Canada a $270,000 purchase at the London selected sale this past fall, Mark, and uh, he'll make that anticipated debut today right in the middle of the card in Qualifier 7. Yeah, Qualifier 7, that will be the final qualifier before we go into a break in the morning. Trained by Dr. Ian Moore, we'll have Louis-Philippe Bois in the sulky. Do uh, son of Better's Delight and comes from, again, comes from a nice family. Obviously, there was a reason he sold for that much money at that London selected yearling sale. You go back and look at the pedigree. Fifth pole from a McArdle mare, a half brother to Mayhem Sealster, a nice performer around here that we saw him make almost close to $400,000. So, as soon as there's a, a price like that put on one, all the expectations go, uh, I would say, through the roof. So, we'll see how he does in that debut here this morning. 
And, uh, you know, as much as we're looking, <coughs> excuse me, at the youngsters themselves, we're also looking at uh, some first crop stallions that we're excited to unveil and uh, get the first look at their offspring here today as well. And a trio will be uh, quite prominent this morning, Mark. Uh, State Treasurer, uh, Control the Moment, and Betting Line, all with a number of youngsters out uh, during the 14 races. Yeah, that's one of the things that a lot of people look forward to at the debut of the baby race is to see which of those first crop stallions uh, is going to make the best impression. And it's not always uh, easy to read when you go back to the yearling sale the year prior because some stallions are going to get hyped. Some probably got better mares than others. But when it gets down to it, it's what do they do on the racetrack? And obviously, we're not going to be able to judge everything based on the first morning. But we're going to get a nice sneak peek at what could lie ahead this season for three performers right there that we saw an awful lot here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. And all three were just a pleasure to watch. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing uh, their offspring going this morning. We had a preview show uh, for our baby races on Cosa TV on a Wednesday night. And our poll question was wanting to know which of the first uh, crop stallions do you think will have a major impact this year and betting line was the resounding choice uh, i think uh, scored 62 percent of uh the poll uh responses on that night so uh he's one that certainly uh, uh people are, are keeping an eye on and uh and we'll uh, be interested to see those uh, in action here this afternoon uh, as far as what we're going to see in the opener mark uh, we're going to get a look at uh, trotters here to kick it off um, and you talk trainers that are going to be busy today uh, and, and stables uh, certainly the stable.ca will be represented by I think somewhere in the vicinity of 27 uh, horses on uh, the 14 race slate here and uh, they've got a number of them right here in the opener. Yeah, they certainly do. We'll have to pass along driver changes as the field comes out onto the track, unlike at the nighttime where the driver changes are all made nice and early. Not the case with the qualifiers, so we'll try and pass those along as they come along, but you get a look at the field for qualifier number one. I'll tell you about one that I'm interested in seeing, and that is number one, Northern Blizzard. The second dam is Blur, who was a tremendous uh, trotting filly and mare that made over a million dollars. This is the second full from the Cadabra mare bluster. So I'll be looking forward to seeing that one from the rail, $20,000 yearling purchase at the Lexington sale back last October. All right, and uh, they are on the track. So we'll let Mark introduce uh, the combatants for qualifier number one. And we'll be uh, looking forward to bringing that to, to you here. In just a moment, again, you're watching coverage of the baby races here on uh, COSA TV from Woodbine Mohawk Park. And uh, again, great to have Mark McKelvey able to join us and uh, chat uh, these babies between races. And uh, he will be calling the action this morning as well. So we'll throw it back up to Mark to set the stage here for qualifier number one. Today's baby race session as we are going to see 14 qualifiers in total. Good morning to those of you watching on our YouTube stream and to those of you watching on COSA TV on the various social media platforms. On the track for the first qualifier, two-year-old Trotters. It is scheduled to be a field of seven. And let's start to introduce this group. We'll start first with number one, Northern Blizzard, a two-year-old gelded son of royalty for life, a $20,000 Lexington selected yearling sale purchase, owned by the stable Northern Blizzard, trained by Amy McDonald, James McDonald will drive. Number two, Italian Grit, is a two-year-old gelded son of Guccio, owned by Mark Adams, who's also the breeder. Mario Bayergeon is the trainer driver. Number three, GW Chrome, a two-year-old gelded son of Break the Bank K, owned by the stable GW Chrome Group, trained and driven by Anthony McDonald, a $12,500 yearling purchase at the Blooded Horse Sale. Number four, Lifelong Wish, is a two-year-old colt by Royalty for Life, owned by Pam Forgey, also the trainer. Co-owner is Donald Schuldice. 
Doug McNair will drive a $10,000 yearling purchase at the London Select Sale. Number five, should have known better, is a two-year-old Colt by Deep Chip. Owned and trained by Shane Arsenault, the driver is Louis-Philippe Bois. Number six, Hawks Bay, a two-year-old Colt by Muscle Mass. Owned and bred by Tony Holmes and Walter Zent. Trained by Susie Kerwood, Scott Young will drive. And number seven is Muscle Jack, a two-year-old Colt by Muscle Mass, owned by Hut Racing Stable, Mortgage Boy Stables, and Blake McIntosh. McIntosh trains. Chris Christopher drives a $32,000 Lexington Selected Yearling Sale purchase. So there's the field of seven taking their positions behind the starting gate. As is normal with the two-year-old qualifiers, the starting gate picks them up at the top of the backstretch. And the rookies will get used to going behind the gate before they'll come around to the start. First of 14 coming up here this morning at Mohawk Park. Starting gate, approaching the top of the stretch for our first qualifier here this morning at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Once again, good morning to everybody tuning in on Costa TV. And to those of you watching along on the Woodbine Mohawk Park YouTube channel, starting gate swings into the stretch. It's a field of seven. Two-year-old trotters picking up speed, and here they come. And they're off and trotting towards the inside. Italian Grit moves out well, along with GW Chrome. Far outside, that is Muscle Jack, who will look to cross over in front of a few rivals. At the rail is Northern Blizzard. Between horses coming through is Shoulda Known Better. And then it is Lifelong Wish and Hawks Bay. Into the first turn they go. Tightly packed is this group of seven heading towards the opening quarter. And up top, it is GW Chrome for Anthony McDonald on top by a pair of lengths. They come to the opening quarter and it's hit in 30 32 and 1. 32 and 1 opener for GW Chrome with a loose lead of about three lengths. Italian Grit trots in second. Muscle Jack is then in third. Northern Blizzard racing in fourth. Then it's a break of almost two lengths coming back to Shoulda Known Better. The final two are Lifelong Wish and Hawks Bay. So this group is single file heading up the back stretch, and it's a lead of almost two for GW Chrome, a two year old gelded son of Break the Bank K. Coming up to the half off a 32-1 and one opener. The half is hit in 103 even. So that was 30-4 and four in the second quarter. And GW Chrome looks good on the lead. In second is Italian Grit. Two and a half lengths going back to Muscle Jack in third. Racing in fourth is Northern Blizzard as they go by 5 eighths, Tracked by Shoulda Known Better. And then it is going back to Lifelong Wish and Hawks Bay. To three quarters they go. GW Chrome looks to kick it up a notch. Hits three quarters in 132 and one. So that was 29 and one in the third quarter, and they're into the stretch. And GW Chrome is looking to finish this one off strong. McDonald calls upon him. We'll go back then about a half dozen lengths to Italian Grid, who's trying to hold on to second. Muscle Jack is looking to come on into that position from towards the back of the group. It is should have known better, looking to move up into fourth up the inside is Lifelong Wish. But this one is all GW Chrome. GW Chrome goes coast to coast. Muscle Jack will finish in second. Should have known better was third. Then it was Lifelong Wish fourth. Italian Italian Grit fifth, Northern Blizzard sixth, and seventh with Hawks Bay, 202 and two for GW Chrome. GW Chrome, Anthony McDonald, victorious in uh, qualifier number one this morning. If you watched our Cosa TV preview show on Wednesday night. Uh, you'll know we talked uh, extensively about this guy. Uh, bargain basement uh, yearling purchase, 12500 by Break the Bank K from a Southwind Elyon mare. Uh, you know, not a regal pedigree, and Anthony talked about it uh, during the show. He said, I just simply like the individual at the sale. A really flashy looking uh, performer. Uh, 
said he had uh, maybe some regrets after the purchase, uh, the way the horse was acting initially, and uh, the breaking process was not an easy one with this guy, but uh, once he learned the ropes, uh, he certainly uh, developed a better attitude along the way and uh, really has blossomed into what he thought was one of his better youngsters and certainly looked good this morning, 202 and 2. Uh, good back half speed and good final quarter speed. And again, uh, this wind uh, at this point anyway, certainly not letting up. And it, it appears to be a strong headwind into the home stretch this morning. So rock solid effort for GW Chrome. Victorious by uh, several lengths in qualifier number one. Again in 202 and two. And I think we're going to throw back up to Mark for his thoughts on qualifier one. First qualifier is complete, and here is the order of finish. Number one, Northern Blizzard was six. Number two, Italian Grit was fifth. Number three, GW Chrome, the winner. Number four, Lifelong Wish was fourth. Number five, Should've Known Better was third. Number six, Hawks Bay was seventh. And number seven, Muscle Jack was second. Six, five, one, four, three, seven, two is your order of finish. The fractions were 32 and one, 103, 132 and one. 202 and 2 for the winner, number 3, GW Chrome, a two year old gelded son of Break the Bank K, owned by the stable GW Chrome Group of Guelph, trained and driven to victory by Anthony McDonald, a $12,500 yearling purchase at the Blooded Horse Sale. GW Chrome takes our first of 14. Back on the trot here with the two-year-olds, field of seven to go postward this time. And uh, one of the high-profile youngsters uh, we're going to see in action here is Stonebridge Armour, a uh, son of muscle mass from the uh, very good producing mare, Armbro Vanquish. Makes this guy running for the $1.2 million winner, man of many missions. He'll occupy post two here this morning. Four trainer Jacques Dupont and a driver Sylvain Filion, owned by Les Ecuries d'Orléans of uh, Quebec, Gestion Levesque, Mario Bourget, and Marc Comerant. All share in the ownership. And this guy was bred by Angie Stiller of Arva, Ontario. So, one of the seven trotters we're going to see in action here for qualifier number two. And uh, Mark, they are already out on the track. the second qualifier. As I mentioned, we only have three qualifiers for trotters today, but we're going to get a good look at potential talent. And that's the thing that we're looking for, right? Is to see who could be that next star. So as they come out, I'll try and grab all the driver updates to let everyone know exactly who will sit behind these rookies. But you mentioned it going back to that first qualifier. I thought that last quarter was pretty good for BW. It's not going to sparkle when you look at it on a line, but Sometimes those lines don't necessarily speak about the wind factor. We'll see if there is any variant. Yesterday they were given two seconds uh, as a variant. Um, we'll find out as the morning rolls along exactly what the AGCO judges decide to do. Yeah, it, it, it's good to watch these races today because when these horses do uh, make their pair mutual debuts, it's not going to show on the charted line uh, how windy it was. So uh, it's great to... Uh, be able to see uh, see it for yourself, so to speak, here this morning, and uh, be able to uh, utilize that in your handicapping when the time comes. And uh, GW Chrome looks like he certainly will be ready to go. Uh, is there one in particular here in Qualifier Two, Mark, that you're uh, really interested in watching? Well, you already mentioned about Stonebreak Armor coming from that family that includes a man of many missions. Another one on here that I've got my eye on will be. Number six, Stoked Blue Chip for trainer driver Marcel Berrio. $34,000 here is per five. Second four from a Conway Hall mare named Lone Gold, who was a nice New York Sire Stakes uh, trotting mare. She made quite a bit. So I'll be curious to see how Stoked Blue Chip does. This is a son of muscle mass. There's a look at the complete field of seven here for qualifier uh, number two. So, yeah, they're going to roll along pretty quickly here uh, this morning. There will be um, a substantial break mark uh, in between. Maybe just let us know, uh, you know, what people can expect in that regard. Uh, I believe at the midway point around race seven today we'll take uh, a break, and uh, that's necessitated, obviously. It's something they do normally, but uh, necessitated now with the COVID-19 situation as well. 
Yeah, exactly. That is the case when it comes to the COVID regulations or protocols that uh, had to be put into place. They want to limit the amount of traffic inside the paddock and the amount of people there at once. So, of course, today when you got 14 qualifiers, a lot of people, a lot of moving parts. So by taking a break, you allow those who are in early to get in, you allow those that are in later to come in, they can start to warm up during that break. And uh, so far, it's worked really well. Uh, doing it this way over the last few weeks and uh, you know kudos to everybody that is uh, following along with the protocols and making life uh, easy I know it's not convenient sometimes but right now with the situation that we're in everyone's got to do their part it's been really good and during that uh, break today when we get to that point uh, we'll try and grab a, a few interviews during that time with some of the participants uh, difficult to get them in between races today because uh, we are moving along so quickly but we'll try and do that we've got some feature content uh, for you as well so it's going to be a, a long and a busy morning but uh, an exciting one uh, always an exciting time of year when we get a look at uh, the youngsters here for the first time behind the starting gate uh, mix of trotters and pacers this afternoon and as mentioned some high profile individuals as well looks like the starting gates uh, getting set to move into position here shortly mark and uh, we'll turn it back up to you for the call of race number two we're back on the trot this time and we expect to have a start coming up shortly Second qualifier is up next, and all seven trotters are now on the track. Let's meet the field. Number one is Argento, a two-year-old gelded son of Donato Hanover, owned by the stable Argento Group, trained by Anthony McDonald. James McDonald will drive a $17,000 Lexian Select yearling sale purchase. Two is Stonebridge Armor, a two-year-old colt by Muscle Mass, owned by Le Curie d'Orléans. Just John Levesque, Mario Bourget, and Mark Cameron. Jacques Dupont trains. Sylvain Fillion drives a $45,000 Lexington purchase. Three, I'm Hill on Wheels. is a trio colt by Muscle Hill, owned by the stable I'm Hill on Wheels. Trained and driven by Mario Bayarjan, a $22,000 Lexington select purchase. Number four, Lincoln Hanover is a two-year-old gelded son of Chapter 7, owned by the stable Lincoln Hanover, trained by Mario Bayarjan. Anthony McDonald will drive a $17,000 Harrisburg purchase. Five, I'm a sharp dealer. It's a two-year-old colt by Whelan and Dillon, owned by Kenneth Solomon, trained by Chantel Mitchell, and driven by Louis-Philippe Bois. Number six, Stoked Blue Chip, is a two-year-old colt by Muscle Mass, owned by Wayne McRae, Howmack Farms, trained and driven by Marcel Berrio, a $34,000 Harrisburg buy. And number seven, Arch Hall, a trio colt by Archangel, owned by Hut Racing Stable and Blake McIntosh. McIntosh trains Chris Christophe, who drives a $20,000 London yearling sale purchase. So there's your group of seven. Driver notes, number one, Argento, will be driven by James McDonald. Number four, Lincoln Hanover, will be driven by Anthony McDonald. Starting gate to the top of the stretch. Gate picking up speed, and here they come. Off stride number three on Hill on Wheels. The rest of them are off and trotting. Stonebridge Armor from post two moves out well for Filion as he looks to his right and sees Stoked Blue Chip marching forward for Barrio. There's Stoked Blue Chip coming through, looking to get to the top spot. Following in behind the lead pair in the early going is Lincoln Hanover. At the inside is Argento. Outside crossing over now is Arch Hall to get in front of I'm a Sharp Dealer. And then the final one is I'm Hill on Wheels who made the miscue at the beginning. They're heading to the opening quarter and Stonebridge Armor is the leader. Here's Stonebridge Armor through an opening quarter of 32 and 3. Pretty good wind 
that they were facing coming through the lane. It'll be at their backs for the most part now as they swing up the backside. Three and a half length advantage here for Stonebridge Armor. Two-year-old Colt by Muscle Mass is showing the way. Racing in second is Stoked Blue Chip. Then in third, that is Lincoln Hanover. Two and a half lengths back to Argento in fourth. About that same margin to Arch Hall, who is racing in fifth. Six up the backside, I'm a sharp dealer. And seventh is I'm Hill on wheels. They're coming towards the midway point. Stonebridge Armor calling the shots through a half of 104 and two. So a half of 104 and two for Stonebridge Armor, who takes them into the far turn. Stonebridge Armor, a $45,000 Lexian Select yearling sale purchase, is the leader. Going by five eights now on top by two and a half lengths. Stoked Blue Chip in second. Right in behind is Lincoln Hanover third. Fourth is Argento. Then it's back to Arch Hall, the final two. I'm a sharp dealer. And I'm Hill on wheels, three quarters, one, 34, and three. 30 and one third quarter into the stretch. The leader continues to be Stonebridge Armor, but he's confronted now because here with a rush comes Lincoln Hanover. And Lincoln Hanover is marching up in the center of the track and takes the lead with an eighth of a mile to go. Lincoln Hanover to the top. Stonebridge Armor in second. Stoke Blue Chip in third. Arch Hall looking to finish up well. Maybe we'll gain one more spot, but at the edge of the tote board, it is going to be Lincoln Hanover to take it. Stonebridge Armor was second. Stoke Blue Chip third. Arch Hall was fourth. Then it was I'm a sharp dealer. I'm um, heel on wheels. And Argento made a break in the stretch. 2.04 and won the final time for Lincoln Hanover. And one, the win time in qualifier number two, Lincoln Hanover and the stable.ca goes two for two so far in qualifying action. This one is on a chapter seven, 204 and one, the win time. And as you can see in behind me, I'm sure uh, the wind, if uh, anything is picking up, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing how cold and windy it is this morning. So again, uh, consider that when you see uh, the times uh, posted here, they might not be as flashy as they ordinarily would be uh, on a day like today, uh, but uh, I think uh, still impressive. You see final quarters, anything under 30 seconds, especially on the trot, considering it's a bit of a crosswind and uh, at times could even be a headwind in the home stretch here this morning, uh, definitely something uh, you want to consider. So, so, so far, so good for uh, uh, the stable, certainly. They've got uh, their young trotters uh, coming ready to compete here this morning and uh, two for two, as mentioned, to start here uh, in the morning session. We'll take a, a quick commercial break and we'll be back with a look at the field for qualifier number three, another trotting event coming up here in just a moment. Here is the order of finish from the second qualifier. Number one, Argento was seventh. Number two, Stonebridge Armor was second. Number three, I'm Hill on Wheels was sixth. Number four, Lincoln Hanover was the winner. Number five, I'm a Sharp Dealer was fifth. Number six, Stoke Blue Chip third. Number seven, Arch Hall fourth. Top to bottom, seven, two, six, one, five, three, four. Fractions were 32 and three, 104 and two, 134 and three, 204 and one for the winner. Number four, Lincoln Hanover, a two year old gelded son of Chapter Seven, owned by the stable Lincoln Hanover. Trained by Mario Bayarjan, driven this morning by Anthony McDonald. Lincoln Hanover, a $17,000 Harrisburg purchase, takes qualifier number two.
There's a look at the field for qualifier number three. And uh, a field of seven to go postward again in this one. And uh, if you watched our preview show on Wednesday night, uh, we've got a couple of other ones in here that uh, we talked about that night, including number three, Black Tie Bash. Another uh, son of chapter seven going to the post here for trainer Blake McIntosh, Fred Brayford, uh, Blake uh, share ownership along with the Mortgage Boys stable and the Black Tie Bash stables. Uh, this one is a son of Dalon Mermaid from chapter or by chapter seven from Dalon Mermaid and Dalon Mermaid, of course, uh, a regally bred mare herself, sister to double millionaire Dalon Magician and the $600,000 winning uh, Dalon Miracle. Uh, she herself a $55,000 winner and uh, one of the first ones from this mare. So Black Tie Bash, a one that uh, I know Blake uh, has been very happy with training down Mark and uh, one of the ones that we're expecting uh, a solid effort from here this morning in the debut. Yeah, based on the pedigree, that would certainly indicate that we could see something nice here from black tie bash and obviously getting those comments from blake mcintosh could back that up again you, you note about the family that she comes from another one that i've gone through and looked at you go back to the pedigree on number two walk on the moon a twenty thousand dollar lexington select yearling sale purchase this one is out of a classic photo mare named classic bell she's a half sister to the veteran warrior whiskey tax so we'll see if this one's got some of that grit He's the son of Archangel, and the horses are moving out onto the track. So far, just a couple of them out there. So we still got a little bit of time before this third qualifier. Of course, when you mentioned about Black Tie Bass, that's one that is a son of Chapter 7. So that would be the New York Sire Stakes circuit that Blake McIntosh would more than likely be looking at. And you're racing the New York Sire Stakes, you do quite a bit of racing on some smaller size tracks than what we'd see here at Mohawk Park. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's a circuit that, uh, that Blake uh, knows well and uh, certainly had a lot of success uh, with in recent years and, and has a focus toward, uh, aside from obviously uh, the ones he races here in the Ontario program as well. Number seven is Mystic. Uh, this one, a gelded son of Cadabra from a Donna Rail Mare, just a $14,000 yearling purchase. Uh, Renee Dion and uh, Susie Kerwood sharing the ownership. Uh, Renee trains and will do the driving this morning. And uh, they've had a lot of success with the Trotters in recent years, Mark. Yeah, they certainly have. Just got word from the judges that numbers five and six, Eternity Road and Cambridge Star will be out of this qualifier. So it'll be a group of five, which means they'll go to the gate in just a moment. But to your point, talking about Renee Dion, Susie Kerwood teaming up uh, again, there's a one that they maybe are going to get a bit of a bargain uh, find here. $14,000 purchase comes from uh, the ninth hole from a Donna Rail mare. We'll see what Mystic can do here. Renee Dion, but you notice in the last couple of weeks, opting to sit behind these horses for their first qualifiers rather than giving them over to a catch driver right away. So we'll see what the approach is here with Mystic this morning. And the number one in the field for Whelan. Uh, this one, a son of Wheeling and Dealing, another one that uh, you know we're looking forward to seeing uh, the offspring of uh, this guy. Thirty-two thousand dollar yearling purchase, and uh, Marcel Barrio, uh, the trainer, he'll be in the driver's seat here, and uh, Marcel also shares in the ownership and a decent pedigree on this one as well. Certainly is thirty-two thousand dollar London purchase. Gate starting to roll, so let's meet the field for the third qualifier. Wings of the Gator open, third qualifier, two-year-old trotters are moving up. Scratch number five, Eternity Road, and scratch number six, Cambridge Star. James McDonald drives number four, Fox Valley, Britska. From the inside out, number one is four, Whelan, a two-year-old colt by Whelan and Dealin, owned by Gestion Mustel and Marcel Berrio. Berrio is the trainer driver, a $32,000 London yearling sale purchase. Two, Walk on the Moon, a two-year-old colt by Archangel, owned by the stable Walk on the Moon. Trainer driver is Mario Bayarjan, a $20,000 Lexian Select purchase. Three, Black Tie Bash is a two-year-old colt by Chapter 7, owned by Fred Brayford, Blake McIntosh, Mortgage Boys Stable, and Black Tie Bash Stables. Blake McIntosh trains Chris Christopher drives a $50,000 yearling purchase at last fall's Lexington Select sale.
Number four, Fox Valley Britska is a two-year-old gelded son of Whom Shall I Fear, owned by the stable Britska Group, trained by Anthony McDonald. James McDonald will drive. Numbers five and number six are scratched. And number seven is Mystic, a two-year-old gelded son of Cadabra, owned by Susie Kerwood and Renee Dion. Rene Dion is the trainer driver, a $14,000 Lexan Select purchase. So it'll be a field of five for our third qualifier. Once again, we remain on the trot. This is our third of three events this morning for two-year-old Colton Gelding Trotters. We'll move over to the pace in qualifier number four. But here is the third, and the starting gate is picking up speed. And they're off and trotting. Mystic from the outside will look to move to the top, looking to get in front of the four other rivals here in this third qualifier. Walk on the Moon, though, stepped off the gate nicely. And those two are the quickest away. Fox Valley Britska will slide ahead for McDonald. Not going to be able to settle in third, though, as Black Tie Bash holds ground for the time being. And then it is four-wheeling, getting away in fifth. They're coming to the opening quarter, and Mystic is the leader. Mystic will take him through an opening panel of 31 seconds flat. So as we'll move into the back stretch, finding a seat now in fourth will be Fox Valley Britska. And this group of five will march up the backside towards the half. Mystic is the leader, a $14,000 Lexian Select yearling purchase. Lead, though, is short-lived because a few rivals are moving around now. Walk on the Moon sweeps up to take the lead, and Black Tie Bash is underway. Here's Black Tie Bash on the outside, looking to get up on even terms with Walk on the Moon as they race past the midway point in 102 and 4. Going into the far turn, and the new leader is Black Tie Bash. Good move to the top for Christofferu, trotting comfortably on the lead. Walk on the Moon in second from the back of the pack now. Coming up is four wheeling. Angling out and getting underway is Fox Valley Britska to catch that cover. And all of a sudden, Mystic, who was the leader at the opening quarter, is back to fifth. Black Tie Bash leads by a length on the outside. It's four wheeling, getting a little closer. Three quarter time, 134. So they'll turn for home. And at the inside, it's Black Tie Bash. Going to have to fight off a few rivals now as they come to the eighth pole. Four wheeling on the outside, continuing to grind away, swinging wide. That is Fox Valley Britska, and then in behind is Walk on the Moon, who might have a lane up the rail late. It's still Black Tie Bash with the lead. Coming up the inside now is Walk on the Moon. Black Tie Bash and Walk on the Moon coming to the line. Very tight, but Black Tie Bash appears to hold on. Walk on the Moon was second. Four wheeling third. Fox Valley Britska fourth, and Mystic was fifth. 203 and one. Close finish in uh, qualifier number three this morning. Walk on the moon. The son of our angel comes to the wire together with Black Time Bash, the horse that we talked about uh, before the race. The son of chapter seven had made the lead in the middle half and uh, they closed home in 29 and one, I believe, Mark. And uh, again, that's, uh, that's really solid as the wind continues to swirl. Yeah, it is. I thought that move to the top was pretty comfortable for Black Tie Bash. And when they came into the lane, just the look of him, I thought he might be able to win this one by a few lengths, but full marks to walk on the move. It gives that bit up the inside for trainer driver Mario Bayarjan. The stable, though, is going to see their streak snapped at two in a row here this morning. And for Black Tie Bash, I think that's a nice looking effort in this debut. We'll get confirmation in just a second. We'll check in with the judges to get the official rundown, but Black Tie Bash, we talked about them before, and it's always uh, always good when we can talk about one and, and hype them up a little bit, and then they're able to deliver. And just before we switch uh, gears uh, to the pace for uh, the bulk of the uh, remainder of the session uh, this morning, Mark, uh, you mentioned it yesterday in the two races, and uh, so far we're seeing it again uh, this morning. For the most part, uh, a pretty well-mannered and uh, professional-looking group of trotters that we've seen so far. It is, and I'm not sure what to chalk that up to. I'd like to talk to a couple of trainers and just get their opinions. You know, there was a time when you'd come to the baby races and you could see anything, really. Some of them would act up, but it just feels like they're maturing at a different rate now, these horses. And again, if you're in the first week of the baby races, there has to be some belief that you've got something that is ready to go. 
Uh, a lot of trainers, despite the fact that we're pretty much one week later than we would typically be for baby races, a lot usually come out that second week, which would line up with this weekend here, but they're still opting to wait another weekend before they'll debut. And I'd expect we'll see even more. We had about 120 entered this week for the baby races. And to me, if you're ready to go, um, you must be seeing something there that says that they're going to be able to perform or at least hold their own once they get out there. So if you're just joining us uh, today, great to have you uh, tuning in wherever you are watching. I think we've had uh, even people from overseas commenting that they're uh, watching on the feed here this morning. And uh, Mark, uh, if you just tuned in and you saw that uh, shot a moment ago, it's a, a sunny, beautiful looking day. Um, you know, you, you might get fooled into thinking that uh, yeah, it's a, a real warm, beautiful uh, morning. It's not really the case, it's, uh, it's chilly and it is windy so uh i think full marks to the uh, young trotters that we've seen so far through the first three qualifiers and how they uh, have been performing so far uh, we're going to send it back up to mark i think he's got the rundown of that third qualifier for us before we meet the field on track for qualifier four here are the results from qualifier number three. Number one, Four Wheelin' was third. Number two, Walk on the Moon, second. Number three, Black Tie Bash, the winner. Number four, Fox Valley Britska was fourth. Numbers five and six were scratched, and number seven, Mystic, was fifth. Top to bottom, three, two, one, four, scratch, scratch, five. Fractions were 31, 102, and four, 134, 203, and one for the winner. Number three, Black Tie Bash, a two-year-old colt by Chapter 7, owned by Fred Brayford, Blake McIntosh, Mortgage Boy Stable, and Black Tie Bash Stables. McIntosh, the winning trainer, Chris Christopher, who's in the sulky, a $50,000 Lexington Select yearling sale purchase. Field for qualifier number four this morning. We are switching to the pace and a field of eight will line up this time uh, on the far outside of the starting gate. An intriguing youngster, a son of shadow play, owned by Ian Moore, co-owned by Ian, along with RG McGroup Limited as Serge Savard and the uh, same ownership group that campaigned at the Stallion, shadow play. This guy, a half brother to the million dollar winner, Symphony in Motion, and half million dollar winner, Lambretta. So, Mark, pedigree potential galore for number eight snap call. You mentioned about snap call there, Greg, and, and there's one that I'm sure the connections have got high hopes for. We'll have to leave from the outside and I seem to find in these qualifiers, those that are on the outside like to get away well because they don't want to get in too much trouble early on. And they don't want to be too far off the pace. So we'll see what Tyler Moore is going to drive. We'll see what he'll do here this morning with snap call. Uh, Braymar, the number five in the field, uh, another one that we touched on extensively during our preview show on Wednesday night. Uh, this one, a son of betting line. A lot of people have been looking forward to seeing uh, the betting lines hit the racetrack. And uh, in the video that we saw taken from a, a recent training session during the morning, a Braemar, a flashy looking individual. Uh, it certainly looks like he is ready to go at first asking. And uh, I think uh, you'll see something good from him this morning. A $30,000 yearling. Uh, from the mayor, Don't You Smile, who was uh, a great uh, raceway performer herself. So there's a look at uh, some of the details surrounding Braemar, another one owned by the stable.ca, who, Mark, have already had a very good morning with a couple of winners. So we'll catch up uh, with Mark here in a second. Uh, looks like the starting gate is getting set to roll with this field of eight. And uh, we're switching from the trot to the pace here in qualifier number four. Mark will have the description coming up here in just a moment. Here we go for qualifier number four. Two-year-old pacers are lining up. Number two, Combatant, will be driven by Louis-Philippe Bois. The three, Surreal Love, driven by Mario Bayarjan. And number eight, Snap Call, will be driven by Tyler Moore. Here's the field. Number one is Touch Em All Joe, a two-year-old colt by Roll with Joe, owned by Brian and David Leggy, trained by Ken Susie, the driver's Chris Christofferu. Number two, Combatant, a two-year-old colt by Royal Majesty, owned by Hut Racing Stable and Blake McIntosh. 
trained by Macintosh. Louis Waugh drives an $8,000 London yearling sale graduate. Three is Surreal Love. Two-year-old Gelded son is so surreal, owned by the stable Surreal Love, trained by Harry Poulton. Mario by Arjan drives a $6,000 Goshen yearling sale by. Number four, Between I and You, is a two-year-old Colt by State Treasurer, owned by Cavers 3 Stable, trained by Wayne McGee. Sylvan Filion drives. Number five, Braymar, a two-year-old Colt by Betting Line, owned by the stable Braymar Group, trained by Amy McDonald. Anthony McDonald drives a $30,000 Lexington purchase. Six is Little Red Sports Star, two-year-old Colt by Sports Rider, owned by Dan, owned by Dan and Kim Sargent. Trained by Blake McIntosh, Doug McNair drives. Seven, Take Control, a Control the Moment Colt, owned by Ben Mudry, Dan Legacy. Legacy Trains, James McDonald drives, an $8,000 London yearling sale purchase. And eight is Snap Call, two-year-old Colt by Shadowplay, owned by Dr. Ian Moore, along with RG McGroup Limited, Serge Savard, trained by Ian Moore. Tyler Moore drives, a $57,000 Harrisburg buy. Gate picking up speed, and here they come for the fourth. And they're off and pacing. So Real Love comes through in the early going for Bayarjan on the outside. That is Take Control. And then between rivals is Filion with Between I and You. In the center of the track is Little Red Sports Star. Now cutting across, it is Snap Call towards the inside. Touch them all, Joe. And the final one is Combatant as they enter the first turn. At the inside... Holding a narrow advantage was Surreal Love, but sweeping up now and grabbing command is Take Control. Opening quarter, 31 and 4. So Take Control is in control. Little Red Sports Star, though, is on the move. And here comes Little Red Sports Star now up for McNair, looking to grab command at the 3 8 pole. So here is Little Red Sports Star now in control. Takes it from Take Control. Racing in third is Surreal Love, being tracked then in fourth by Between I and You. Racing in fifth is Bray Mar, sixth is Snap Call, then seventh is Touch 'em All Joe, and Combatant is at the rear of the field as they're past the half in 102 and 1. So the leader for Doug McNair's Little Red Sports Star. This is a son of Sports Rider. He is showing the way as they enter the far turn. In second, though, is Take Control, who looks to stay right on the leader's back. Gapping there in third is Surreal Love. To the outside comes Between I and You. Then in fifth is Braymar, about five lengths. Then to Snap Call, who is six. And at the back, it is Touch Em All Joe and Combatant on the outside. Three quarters, 132 flat. 29 and four, third quarter into the stretch. Little Red Sport Star at the inside, being confronted now by Between I and You. And Between I and You goes by. As Little Red Sports Star put in some bad steps and goes off stride into the final eighth of the mile between I and you now with the lead. Two and a half lengths back then to take control in second. Looking to come on late as Braymar up into third between I and you to win. Take control was second. Braymar was third. Rushing up, touch them all. Joe got fourth over Surreal Love. Snap call. And then it was Little Red Sports Star and Combatant. Time of the mile, 201 flat. Between I and you, a son of State Treasurer, one of the first crop uh, stallions that we talked about off the top this morning. And uh, he looks good for the Capers 3 stable of Sydney, Nova Scotia, Wayne McGee in training, and Sylvan Filion in the driver's seat. So it looks like uh, this group maybe has another good youngster on their hands. And uh, he did it pretty impressively with 29 second final quarter speed mark. And uh, again, we maybe sound like a broken record uh, this morning with uh, the win, but uh, you know that's a, a solid final quarter. I think as we uh, check the results at the end of the day, it'll be uh, one of the uh, the races where you have a look and say that was pretty impressive. Yeah, certainly, and I thought that was a good move coming to three quarters. That was made by the eventual winner between I and you, and you mentioned. Capers 3 stable, Wayne McGee, Sylvan Filion all teaming up here. Good start for that first crop of state treasure to come out and come through with that victory. Eighth full from a Camluck mare, so just kind of going back through the pedigree here to see exactly what could have been in the line there for between I and you, but I think they got to be very happy with that performance. Tough break there for Little Red Sports Star, uh, the Blake McIntosh trainee. Led them into the lane, got confronted pretty quickly there by Between I and You, and then just put in those steps. Nice job by Doug McNair. Keep that one together and to get to the inside and everyone avoids. And 
Uh, one to keep an eye on, I'd say, was Touch Em All Joe, who was at the back of the group the entire way, and that one rallied to get fourth. I thought that was a real nice quarter from the Ken Susie trainee. Chris Christopher was driving that son of a roll with Joe, so we'll keep our eye on Touch Em All Joe for future consideration. Soul State Treasurer, uh, yeah, good uh, look at one of his youngsters in action uh, this morning. We'll see a few more uh, sprinkled throughout the uh, remainder of the 14 race qualifying session. Of course, uh, great racehorse himself, a double millionaire, past winner of uh, races like the U.S. Pacing Championship, a three-time winner of the Molson Pace just down the highway uh, in London as well, and uh, off to a good start uh, for him here this morning as well. We continue to roll along, qualifier number five, getting set to uh, come up here in just a moment. And uh, some other ones that uh, I think certainly uh, catch your attention in terms of pedigree, and one of them, number three, Hurry Mickey Hanover, this one a son of Always Be Mickey. Uh, another one uh, sent out by trainer Blake McIntosh. James McDonald going to team up uh, for the drive on this guy. He is from the great mayor Hannah Hanover, a $1.2 million winner. Uh, remember her campaigning for uh, trainer Mark Stacy, And uh, her production record has been very impressive so far to say the least. Uh, has already produced uh, the 147 and 3 winner Hayden Hanover and the uh, very good two year old from last year, Captain Nemo. Uh, he didn't win in five starts, but he was the runner up in all five trips postward, and unfortunately, uh, they all came at the hands of a stablemate, Captain Midnight. Uh, just uh, ran up against a, a very good one he couldn't seem to beat last year, but uh, he was second five uh, times against that one. Uh, stakes placed for most of those. So uh, yet another one that we're uh, anxious to get a look at here as we uh, throw it back up to Mark uh, for his recap of race number four. Not sure if he's got the finish order just yet, but uh, should have it momentarily. And there's a look at the field page for the upcoming fifth. Qualifier number four, here are the results. Number one, Touch Em All Joe was fourth. Number two, Combatant was eighth. Number three, Surreal Love fifth. Number four, Between I and You was the winner. Number five, Braemar was third. Number six, Little Red Sports Star seventh. Number seven, Take Control second. And number eight, Snap Call was sixth. Four, eight, five, one, three, seven, two, six is the rundown. The fractions were 31 and four, 102 and one, 132, 201 flat for the winner. Number four, Between I and You, a son of State Treasurer, owned by Capers 3 Stable, trained by Wayne McGee, and driven to victory by Sylvan Filion. Uh, again, for the upcoming fifth race uh, today, we talked about the three. Hurry, Mickey Hanover. Uh, the number one in the field, Fonzie Chacciarelli, son of Better Than Cheddar. And uh, our colleague, Ken Middleton, the voice of Mohawk Park, uh, sends this one out. Kenny owns and uh, does the training. And campaigned uh, the mayor, Mark, Little Miss Sporty. She was uh, a solid producer for Ken and company. Winner of 128000 and this is... Uh, her first full. It is, and uh, I didn't have a chance to talk to Kenny last night to get input on what he thought of his youngsters, but he, I know he tweeted out recently uh, some input from their uh, training miles. I think they visited Mohawk Park here a week ago, so he's got a couple rookies in to go this morning that look set, and uh, we wish him nothing but the best. Here they are entering uh, the track now for qualifier. Uh, number five, and we talked about Fonzie Chacciarelli, and uh, Kenny will have a couple uh, that he's qualifying here uh, this morning as well. Warawee was up, son of Warawee Needy, gelded son of that one from post two, $12,000 yearling purchase, Kevin McMaster training for the stable, .ca. And uh, Island Beach Boys, the number four in the field, Marcel Berrio with another one here. He'll train and drive this son of some beach somewhere. For uh, Maritime Connections, Ian Smith of Charlottetown, Arnold Hagen of Bible Hill, Nova Scotia. Uh, they share the ownership on this one uh, from post four with Pop Sperio in the driver's seat there. So another intriguing uh, group here to say the least, Mark, in qualifier number five. And I think uh, we'll uh, certainly see something jump out of this qualifier that catches our eye. I would think so, and even just go through the yearling prices, uh, there wasn't really any uh, basement prices on any of these two-year-old pacers, so 
definitely some good hopes for this group of eight. Although I think we're going to have a scratch here in this fifth qualifier. So far, I got seven of them out there on the track. I haven't got a call yet from the judges. I did get a call just before the fourth qualifier. We can let you know that they are going to give a two second variant. Is my understanding. Once again, the track will be listed as good. So uh, take that into consideration when you see the uh, final times here this morning. And uh, yes, uh, Mark McKelvey uh, joining us uh, from high atop of Mohawk Park here, calling the action. So uh, we're, we're just kind of doing this on the fly. Mark's got to uh, call the races. He's, he's chatting with me. He's trying to uh, get updates on the changes from the judges. So uh, multitasking and uh, obviously doing a fantastic job. And uh, because of the wind, we have a little bit of trouble, in fact, hearing each other today. It's, it's amazing. And... Uh, not as nice as it looks on screen, but hey, we'll take it. We're just glad to be here and seeing the babies in action. Here's Mark with the call of the upcoming fifth. Qualifier number five, scratch number one, Fonzie Chacharelli. Tyler Moore drives six, Shadow Warrior. Here is the field. We'll start with the rail horse. That will be where we was up, although we'll have this group of youngsters regroup in a moment. Looks like there's an issue. Not exactly sure. Looks like, yep, it'll be number six, Shadow Warrior. Looks like the, it does have to get checked up again. So let's introduce the field. Number two, Warrowee was up. A two-year-old guy that's on a Warrowee Needy, owned by the stable Warrowee was up. Trained by Kevin McMaster, driven by Anthony McDonald. A $12,000 London yearling sale purchase. Number three, Hurry Mickey Hanover is a two-year-old colt by Always Be Mickey, owned by Blake McIntosh, Ridgeway Racing, the Flanagan Sisters, trained by Blake McIntosh, James McDonald Drives, $37,000 Harrisburg Buy. Four Island Beach Boys, a two-year-old colt by Some Beach Somewhere, owned by Ian Smith, Arnold Hagen, trained by Marcel Berrio. He'll also do the driving. Number five, First Glance, a two-year-old gelded son of Thinking Out Loud, owned by the stable First Glance, trained by Mario Bayarjan. He'll also be in the sulky. Number six is Shadow Warrior, two-year-old colt by Shadow Play, owned by Dominic Shiravalli and Dr. Ian Moore. Ian Moore trains. Tyler Moore will drive a $33,000 London yearling sale by. Seven, Twin B Heart Throb is a two-year-old colt by Better Than Cheddar, owned by Capers 3 Stable. Trained by Wayne McGean, Sylvan Fillion Steers, a $20,000 London yearling sale purchase. And number eight, Great Somewhere, a two-year-old colt by Some Beach Somewhere, owned by Reginald Pettipaw, Dr. Ruth Irving. Jills Landry, Blake McIntosh. McIntosh is the trainer. Doug McNair drives a $47,000 London yearling sale purchase. So number six, Shadow Warrior, is heading back to the paddock for an equipment adjustment. Before we'll get things going here with qualifier number five. Once again, good morning to everybody who is watching along on the Woodbine Mohawk Park YouTube channel. And to those of you tuned in on COSA TV, joining myself and Greg Blanchard, with the action. So we'll have a slight delay before we'll head to the gate for the fifth qualifier. So yeah, we've got one coming back uh, into the paddock uh, for what we assume is an equipment adjustment. We'll so update have a from, date from the judges. Number six, Shadow Warrior. Goes back to the paddock. The check is broken, so he'll have a moment to get that equipment fixed. And in the meantime, the youngsters will show their patience before they'll go to the gate for the fifth of 14. Right there's another look at the field page for this upcoming contest. Uh, field of eight two-year-old pacers getting set to go. Just under a short delay. Uh, while we have a moment, uh, Mark, I uh, wanted to chat with you about last night's uh, TSN show. Uh, highly anticipated, uh, with one of the, being one of the first uh, sports back in action uh, for live sporting event uh, anywhere in North America. Uh, it was great that Woodbine Entertainment uh, Group was able to work a deal with uh, Canada Sports Leader TSN to televise uh, dual breed race programs, uh, thoroughbreds in the afternoon and then uh, some of the nighttime harness action last night. So when you consider the debut of that, um, 
considering there hasn't been anything in the sporting landscape for quite some time, the fact that it's a dual breed production and then throw in the unique uh, conditions that we're under, I don't think you could have asked for a better debut show. It was fantastic. Oh, it was uh, incredible. I give full kudos to the entire team here that was able to uh, bring this together. I know that there was talks uh, before racing was shut down in late March about finding that opportunity with there being an open window in the sporting uh, world, at least with sporting television. Uh, and great job by our team to pull this off here at Woodbine Entertainment. I think the one thing that stood out to me, and uh, again, I was here at the track, so catching bits and pieces of the show, but talking to people that aren't necessarily racing fans, or not yet at least. It is the average sports fan. I know I had a lot of friends of mine who tuned in, and then the next question they had was, okay, well, how can I get in on the action? And I think uh, there was a great job done to showcase the brand new Dark Horse app, which uh, if you haven't already, check that out. You can download it in the App Store or on Google Play. The other thing that stood out to me, though, was that second hour of the show and the interaction that we had we didn't in the past normally overlap a thoroughbred and standard bread race from here at Woodbine Entertainment, but that was the case last night. The final race of the thoroughbreds went just after our opening race at 7 o'clock. So I think it's great to get that action and keep it rolling. That's the one thing about our sport. It's the action that happens during the race that really captivates and can bring in the average fan. And I think uh, that last night, anybody who tuned in uh, got a great show. And I look forward to week number two as that's going to air Thursdays at 6 p.m. on TSN. Gate is rolling once again for the fifth qualifier. Scratch number one, Fonzie Chacharelli. Tyler Moore drives number six, Shadow Warrior. Once again, introducing the field from the inside out. Two, Warrowee was up. Son of Warrowee Needy with Anthony McDonald. Three, Hurry Mickey Hanover. Son of Always Be Mickey with James McDonald. Four, Island Beach Boy, a son of some beach somewhere with Marcel Berrio. Five, First Glance. Son of Thinking Out Loud, Mario Bayarjan. Six, Shadow Warrior. Son of Shadow Play, Tyler Moore. Seven, Twin B Heartthrob. Better than Cheddar Colt, being driven by Sylvan Filion. And number eight, Great Somewhere. A son of Some Beach Somewhere with Doug McNair. So it's a field of seven for the fifth qualifier. Starting gate to the top of the stretch. Picking up speed. And here they come. And they're off and pacing. Warawi was up from the inside is the quickest away. Off stride went Island Beach Boy. Driving from the outside is Twin B Heart Throb. Coming through is Shadow Warrior on the outside. Third inside, Hurry Mickey Hanover. And then it's an easy beginning for first glance and great somewhere. Resetting after the break, Island Beach Boy will look to catch up to the pack as they enter the first turn. And it's Twin B Heart Throb. Seizing control for Filion, opening quarter 30 and 1. So the connections that took our fourth qualifier looking to go back to back. Here's Twin B Heartthrob, a $20,000 yearling purchase, son of Better Than Cheddar. With the lead, staying right on his back though, is Warrowee was up as they go by 3 8. It's a break of about four or five lengths. Back to Shadow Warrior in third. Then racing in fourth is Hurry Mickey Hanover. Fifth up the back stretch is first glance. Racing in sixth. That is great somewhere. And trying to catch up still is Island Beach Boy. The half was hitting 59 and 3. So as they enter the far turn. It's a length and a half advantage here for Twin B Heartthrob. 30 and 1 opener. The half was 59 and 3, so he went 29 and 2. Up the back stretch. 5 8 is complete. Twin B Heartthrob the leader. Where we was up in second. Shadow Warrior trying to get a little closer in third. Off stride going to three quarters was first glance. Racing fourth, hurry Mickey Hanover. Then coming on is great somewhere and another break for Island Beach Boy. Three quarter time, 128 and two into the stretch. And here is Twin B Heartthrob. Twin B Heartthrob looking to kick clear. Eighth of a mile to go and he's on top by about three lengths. Shadow Warrior on the outside looking to overtake second from Warrowee was up. But Twinby Heartthrob is home cool now. Off stride went Shadow Warrior. Here's Twinby Heartthrob, Philly on and McGee to take another one. Finishing in second was Warrowee was up. Shadow Warrior third. Great somewhere fourth. And then fifth was Hurry Mickey Hanover. 
followed by First Glance and Island Beach Boy, 157-3 for Twinby Heartthrob. One fifty-seven and three, by far the fastest uh, mile so far through five qualifiers this morning, and the baby races here at uh, Woodbine Mohawk Park, and it's Twinby Heartthrob getting it done here, and uh, coming right back, trainer Wayne McGee, driver Silva and Filion, and the Capers Three Stable, Twinby Heartthrob, a son of a better than Cheddar from uh, the Pandarosa mare, Twinby Intimate. A uh, big, uh, long striding son of better than Cheddar. Looked very good doing it in 57 and uh, three. Again, a huge mile uh, here this morning. Uh, cold and windy. Uh, I am literally shaking here at the desk here. So uh, that is ultra impressive, Mark. And uh, again, uh, you know, we talked about some others in there, but there's one jumping up and really catching our eye. Certainly was. and. If there's anything that you can pick up on coming out of that qualifier just before it was those connections had a nice looking performance there in the fourth and then when you see they got one right back into the fifth immediately you wonder is this one going to be just as good if not better and i think it's going to be hard throb looked great for Silva and Filion. we're really looking good coming through the lane to get the victory he is the 10th bull from a panda rosa mare named twin the intimate so here's one that comes from an older family and going back through some of the previous offspring there's some there that have made 200 300 thousand dollars so you don't want to ever peg one before you see them but it's going to be hard to drop follow up that looks like you can have a nice looking career but a real good start here with a nice debut qualifier 157 and three and uh let's talk better than cheddar we're talking first crop stallions a lot uh, here this morning um, of course, you've got, uh, you know, the big guns of uh, the OSS program that we talk about uh, year in and year out. But better than Cheddar's one that, uh, you know, I think it's, it's kind of quietly the last couple of years starting to make more and more of a name for himself. Yeah, he is. And, and sometimes it takes a bit of time for those kind of stallions to, to come through. But I think it's consistency and then uh, proving yourself that when buyers do go to the yearling sales, they know exactly what they're going to get. And, um, you know, better than Cheddar, like you said, takes a little bit of time, but making a name for himself. He was a fantastic performer on the track. And you think about a horse that only cost $30,000 a yearling that goes on to make 1.6, um, speaks volumes to those that today are debuting a horse around that same yearling price. And speaking of that stallion, we'll see three of his offspring in this upcoming sixth race this morning. Uh, the number three, Brilliant Corners from the Real Desire Mare. Uh, this time it's for real. The four Mr. Charisma from the Pandarosa Mare Village Jovial and the five bet on Blake from the Shadow Play Mare uh, Lady Lindley. So three better than Cheddar's will line up uh, side by side in this upcoming contest. Mr. Charisma is another one that we uh, were able to get a look at and talk a bit about on our preview show Wednesday night with Blake McIntosh. Uh, Village Jovial, good production record uh, for this daughter of the Pandarosa. She has produced a, a couple of uh, quarter million dollar winners in her career. This guy, a $20,000 uh, yearling. And uh, again, Blake and James McDonald uh, teaming up with this one. Uh, Mark, uh, but we'll head back up to you. I think you've got the order of finish ready from qualifier number five. Here are the results from the fifth qualifier. Number one was Scratch. Number two, War We Was Up was second. Number three, Hurry Mickey Hanover was fifth. Number four, Island Beach Boy, seventh. Number five, First Glance, sixth. Number six, Shadow Warrior, third. Number seven, Twinby Heartthrob, the winner. And number eight, Great Somewhere was fourth. Top to bottom, Scratch, two, five, seven, six, three, one, four on the bottom. Fractions were 30 and one, 59 and three, 128 and two, 157 and three for the winner. Number seven, Twinby Heartthrob. Interior Colt by Better Than Cheddar, owned by Capers Three Stable, trained by Wayne McGee, and driven to victory by Sylvan Filion, a $20,000 London yearling sale purchase. Horses and drivers are getting set to enter the track now for qualifier number six. So we're just about at the midway point of this 14 race, uh, a baby race session, session here at uh, Woodbine 
Mohawk Park field of seven going to the post uh, in here. Another intriguing youngster to look at, uh, Mark, based on pedigree, of course, and uh, the connections is Dietrich Sealster, the number six. Uh, state treasurer already with a winner uh, on the program here this morning. Ian Moore trains and drives this one. A brother to the $1.2 million winning uh, Deuce Sealster and a $65,000 yearling. So I'm sure expectations are relatively high for this guy. Yeah, I would think so. And he's also a brother to Denali Sealster, who I think is going to be a player this season in the Ontario Sire Stakes. So an opportunity that we could see a couple of, of brothers essentially performing well in the OSS on that circuit this year, but a $65,000 purchase. I'm trying to get a look at him once he gets out onto the track. And same connections, of course, that uh, campaigned uh, state treasurer himself, uh, Sally McDonald, Surrey, Prince Edward Island, and uh, Paul McDonald, who resides in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. Um, and state treasurer, of course, came from humble beginnings, developed in Charlottetown, uh, by Kenny Arsenault and then eventually went on to the care of uh, Ian Moore in that great career. And now Ian uh, starts with Dietrich Sealster here uh, this morning at uh, Woodbine Mohawk Park. So yeah, one that we're looking at here, but uh, uh, again, that's the beauty of the baby races. Uh, so much unknown, uh, you just never know who's going to uh, step up and really turn your head. And we saw that back in qualifier number five. Here's another look at the field. Uh, Mark, how do they look on track? Well, so far, I think we've got all of them except maybe one on the track, just trying to count everybody up. But it's, uh, again, something we talked about, just the calmness of a lot of these two-year-olds coming out here and not being intimidated by the bigger and surroundings that typically they'd see at the training center or at the farms. Yeah, talking to, uh, to Blake McIntosh, Anthony McDonald, they were our guests on Coast TV Wednesday, and uh, we, we did laugh about that. Um, how much different it is now breaking uh, these youngsters. Uh, uh, they're so well-bred, and, and uh, you know, that you can almost put break them and put them in the, in the cart uh, within a day. Uh, we talked about the difference between when they uh, first would have started working in the game and, and breaking uh, yearlings and how much uh, how much uh, the breed has been refined over the years. And you're right, Mark, we're seeing a, a great example of that and that professionalism already this morning. That's for sure. And we've got on the track all seven now, so the gate should open in just a moment and let you know the driver change on the three brilliant corners. It'll be Sylvan on to drive that gelded son of better than cheddar. Starting gate beginning to move for the sixth qualifier. Field of seven, two-year-old Pacers. Sylvan Filion drives three brilliant corners. Here's the field. Number one, Southwind Goliath. is a two-year-old colt by sports writer, owned by Dr. Steve Taylor, Pam Forgey. Forgy trains. Doug McNair drives a $17,000 Harrisburg purchase. Two, hot off the press, K is a homebred for Bob Key, a sports writer colt trained by Rod Boyd and driven by Mike Safdick. Three brilliant corners. Two-year-old gelded son of better than cheddar. Owned by Robert Burgess, trained by Anthony McDonald, Sylvan Filion drives. Four, Mr. Charisma, a two-year-old colt by Better Than Cheddar. Owned by Hut Racing Stable, Mike O'Ponion, Daniel Davis, Penny of Hope Stables, Blake McIntosh trains, James McDonald drives, $20,000 Lexington buy. Five, Bet on Blake, is a two-year-old colt by Better Than Cheddar. Owned by John Copas Stables and Clay Horner, along with Drybar Stables and Brian Zong. Trained by John Copas, driven by Randy Waples. A $23,000 London yearling sale purchase. Six, Dietrich Sealster, two-year-old colt by State Treasurer, owned by Sally McDonald and Paul McDonald. Trained by Dr. Ian Moore. He'll also do the driving. A $65,000 London yearling sale buy. And number seven, Roy Hill. 
two-year-old gelded son of Racing Hill, owned by the stable Roy Hill Group, trained by Amy McDonald. Anthony McDonald drives a $17,000 Ohio-selected yearling sale purchase. So there's your field of seven for the sixth qualifier. Gate approaching the top of the stretch. Sixth of 14 here this morning at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Rookie Pacers picking up speed, and here they come. And they're off and pacing. Dietrich Sealster from the outside is blasting away to go to the early lead. At the inside, South Wind Goliath, and coming through in the middle is Mr. Charisma. Inside, fourth is hot off the press K, and then looking to find a seat. Fifth will be bet on Blake. Getting away six, that is brilliant. Corners under a tight hold, and seventh is Roy Hill. Into the first turn, and the leader, it is Dietrich Sealster. We had a first turn breaker at the back. That was Roy Hill. So up front, Dietrich Sealster through the opening quarter in 30 and two. Swinging into the backstretch, and Dr. Ian Moore has put this son of state treasurer, Dietrich Sealster, on the point, and he leads by about four lengths. Southwind Goliath is in a second. Mr. Charisma, third. Racing comfortably fourth, hot off the press K. Tracked fifth by bet on Blake. Sixth is brilliant corners, and then it's well back to Roy Hill as they come towards the midway point. $65,000 yearling buy was Dietrich Sealster at the London Selected Yearling Sale. He's passed the half in a minute and a fifth. So a minute and a fifth for the half, 29 and four in the second quarter off a 30 and two opener. And then they enter the far turn now. The lead is about a length and three quarters for Dietrich Sealster. Southwind Goliath in second. Staying third is Mr. Charisma. Along the wood, fourth is hot off the press K. Fifth is bet on Blake. And then sixth is brilliant corners. Roy Hill, the trailer. Nobody moves just yet. No tugs on the right line at three quarters in 130 and three. So they'll spin for home. And it's Dietrich Steelster continuing to lead the way. He'll try to sprint on home here. We'll see if he gets challenged. Southwind Goliath has been sitting in second. Stays on the leader's back. Might tip out late, but there's an eighth of a mile to go. Dietrich Steelster is looking good, pacing through the lane. Southwind Goliath will take a shot late. Here comes Southwind Goliath on the outside, looking to shoot on by. And Southwind Goliath will do just that. Dietrich Steelster will finish in second. Mr. Charisma was third. Bet on Blake, fourth. Brilliant Corners, fifth. Six was hot off the press K. And Roy Hill was seventh south wing goliath comes by to win in 159 and one a pocket pop victory there for south wind goliath and uh, the first winner of the morning for stallion sports writer this one from the camlock mayor got the munchies pam forgy trains and is the co-owner and uh, Doug McNair in the driver's seat for the victory. So Dietrich Seelster, uh, state treasurer, we talked about him uh, beforehand. He raced well. He did a lot of the road work there. But uh, the son of sports writer looking very good and picking him off. And uh, sports writer off to another good start early on uh, this season, Mark, here, and especially locally. That is the case. You know, the other night we saw some real nice debuts. Indictable Hanover coming through and then uh you know you look at what sports writers done every single year I, sorry i shouldn't say that hanover beaumont hanover is the one i meant to say for jack darling the other night a mile in 149 and four but just uh, each year he really asserts himself in the ontario sire stakes just like you would expect and uh here was a nice performance by southwind goliath i kind of called it coming down the lane i wasn't sure if I Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. All right, well, we apologize for that. I think uh, a technical glitch will <clears throat> try and get uh, connected back up with Mark here in just a moment. You see the horses just stepping off of the track from qualifier number six, where it was Southwind Goliath emerging victorious 159 and one. Uh, 28 and uh, three final quarter to seal the victory there over Dietrich Sealster. 
uh, as mentioned, who did a lot of the road work and uh, fell just short, but uh, I'm sure the connections uh, of both uh, performers quite happy with how they went this morning. And we're just about at the midway point of uh, today's qualifying session. So again, a busy day, 14 races in total. And I believe after this upcoming seventh, uh, we'll take uh, our break, but we'll keep you posted on that. It's going to be approximately a one hour break uh, when we do so. So during that time, uh, hoping to get some interviews uh, with you if we can and uh, some other uh, pre-produced content as well. And then we'll uh, continue with the back half of the show. So Mark, you're back uh, with us here. And again, you were talking about sports writer and, um, you know, we touched on better than cheddar moments ago, uh, former Casey uh, Coleman pupil that's uh, starting to establish himself uh, certainly in the stallion ranks. Uh, but sports writer, he's been doing that for a long time, uh, especially here in Ontario. Yeah, that's what I was uh, getting to is, again, it's just each year, you know, you're going to get something from a sports writer that uh, is going to really impress you and each year. Um, again, it's about that consistency that I talked about, and, and that gives uh, buyers a lot of confidence when they go to the yearling sales. As I was mentioning, Beaumont and over that impressive mile we saw on Monday night, there's a son of sports writer that came along last year towards the end of the season and wins an Ontario Harvest Series event, which historically hasn't necessarily produced great grand circuit performers it, it's more of an event for those that were late bloomers or those who didn't have the greatest of rookie campaigns but here's one for jack darling that i think they knew they had something special and to see a 49 and 4 mile in his season debut was a uh, really impressive looks like he could be one of the stars for sports writer this season yeah, I mean, in recent years, uh, Jimmy Freight really, I think, kind of took him uh, to the next level. You mentioned it. Uh, he's been known as a top OSS stallion uh, and maybe not as much on the grand circuit. Well, Jimmy Freight uh, certainly was able to step up and be very competitive. And uh, Paul Montanover uh, gives you that same indication early uh, on this season as well. Uh, qualifier seven, just about uh, set to step onto the track. There's a look at the field of eight. We'll talk about those more in a moment, but first of all, I think Mark has the rundown from back in race six. Here's the order of finish from the sixth qualifier. Number one, Southwind Goliath was the winner. Number two, Hot Off the Press K was six. Number three, Brilliant Corners was fifth. Number four, Mr. Charisma was third. Number five, Bet on Blake was fourth. Number six, Dietrich Sealster was second. And number seven, Roy Hill was seventh. Top to bottom, one, six, five, three, four, two, seven. Fractions were 30 and two. A minute and a fifth, 130 and three, 159 and one. For the winner, number one, Southwind Goliath, the two-year-old Colt by sports writer, owned by Dr. Steve Taylor and Pam Forgey. Forgey trains. Doug McNair was in the sulky, a $17,000 Harrisburg purchase. So there is a look at the field for this upcoming seventh. And uh, I think if you, you looked at the program pages today and we're going to pick out uh, a highlight race or a feature race, uh, although it sounds strange to say that considering this is the debut for uh, all of these horses today, but uh, likely this would be, be uh, one of the ones you certainly would, uh, would be looking at with a lot of intrigue. And a big part of that is uh, the debut, the much anticipated debut of number four in the field today, Marlboro Sealster. Highest priced yearling ever sold at public auction in Canada. A $270,000 yearling purchase last fall at the London selected sale. Uh, he was purchased by Jeff and Michael Schneider the father and son tandem and they team up with Dr. Ian Moore. He's part of the ownership group and of course does the training. Louis Philippois tasked with the uh, drive for the debut here today. Brother to the $392,000 winning Mayhem Sealster who was uh, one that was uh, sired by Mach 3. Uh, just next door to Marlboro Sealster, another high profile individual Mark and one that we Heard Blake McIntosh talk about on Wednesday night, his name Bazooka Hanover, a regally bred son of Captain Treacherous, a $200,000 yearling purchase. Yeah, that's the race that stood out to me was when you see those big yearling prices and two of them are going to line up side by side. Bazooka Hanover from the Western Terror Mare Bittersweet Terror. This, as mentioned uh, just a moment ago, we talked about Beaumont Hanover, same family, half-brother to Beaumont Hanover, fifth pole from the Mare. 
Captain Treacherous has uh, made a huge splash once he came onto the scene after his great racing career. And uh, Blake McIntosh here has got, I'm sure, some high hopes for Bazooka Hanover. Doug McNair will drive as the field is moving, the field is moving into the backstretch. And uh, looks like we maybe have one or two out, but we'll get the changes in just a second. Starting gate beginning to roll for qualifier number seven. Sylvan Fillion drives to six, Rito Sunshine. Here's the field. Number one, Mustang Beach. Two-year-old Colt by Sunshine Beach. Owned by Michael O'Hagan. Trained by Roger Gebhardt. Robert Shepard will drive. Number two, Desperado, a gelded son of well said, owned by the stable of Desperado Group, trained by Anthony McDonald. He'll steer a $9,500 Goshen yearling sale purchase. Three, Bazooka Hanover is a two-year-old colt by Captain Treacherous, owned by Steve Heimbecker, trained by Blake McIntosh. Doug McNair drives a $200,000 Harrisburg yearling sale purchase. Number four, Marlboro Sealster is a two-year-old colt by Better's Delight, owned by Jeff Snyder and Michael Snyder, along with Dr. Ian Moore. Moore is the trainer. Louis Philippe Waugh will drive. A $270,000 London selected yearling sale purchase. Five, Treasure Delight, the trio Colt by State Treasurer, owned by Doug Millard, trained by Chantel Mitchell. Randy Waples drives a $17,000 Lexington buy. Six, Rito Sunshine is a gelded son of the Sunshine Beach, owned by the stable Rito Sunshine, trained by Anthony McDonald. Sylvan Fillion will drive. Seven, Major Mockover is an art major. Colt, owned by Hut Racing Stable and Blake McIntosh, Touchstone Farms, trained by McIntosh. James McDonald drives a $25,000 Harrisburg purchase. And the eight is No Better Joy, a two-year-old Colt by Better Than Cheddar, owned by Bruno Comegna, trained by Nikki Comegna. Bob McClure drives a $46,000 London yearling sale purchase. Gate picking up speed, and here they come for the seventh. And they're off and pacing from the outside. McClure fires no better joy out of there. No better joy with some good early speed. Also showing speed at the start was Desperado. And there is Major Mockover who is going to slide into a third. Getting in front of Bazooka Hanover who is fourth. Settling fifth is Marlboro Sealster from the rail. Mustang Beach is sixth. Seventh as they'll move into the turn is Treasure Delight. And at the rear of the field is Rito Sunshine. To the opening quarter they go. Pacers go a little wide to avoid the shadows. Up on the board is the opening quarter in 31 and 4. Opening quarter was courtesy of No Better Joy. A two-year-old Colt by Better Than Cheddar is leading the way by two and a half lengths. Desperado in second. Racing third is Major Mockover. Then in fourth is Bazooka Hanover. And then the break is about seven lengths going back to Marlboro Sealster in fifth. Four lengths back then to Mustang Beach who is sixth. Seventh up the backstretch. Rito Sunshine and the trailer is Treasure Delight. Coming up to the half and the leader as they come to the midway point is No Better Joy. Half on the board in 101 and and one, 29 and two in the second quarter. Entering the far turn, No Better Joy continues to lead the way. Desperado trying to stay right with him in second. Two lengths away in third. That is Major Mockover. Then it's two lengths going back to Bazooka Hanover in fourth. Getting a little closer to the rival in front of him is Marlboro Sealster fifth. And then it is back to the final three. Mustang Beach is at the back with Treasure Delight and Rito Sunshine. Three quarters is hit in 129 and four. Turning for home off a good third quarter there's no better joy no better joy's got the jump now up into Sejikin is major mock over Bazooka Hanover drives up into third then back in fourth that is Desperado fifth is Marlboro Sealster less than an eighth of a mile to go and no better joy is pacing home strong here's no better joy uh, better than Cheddar Colt he is going to go coast to coast and he will win finishing in second was major mock over Bazooka Hanover was third Desperado fourth Marlboro Marlboro Sealster fifth and Mustang Beach Treasures Delight and Rito Sunshine 158 and four. Another ultra impressive effort this morning 58 and four under a hand drive at the end. No better joy. Another winner today for better than cheddar. This one uh, from the All-American Ingot Mayor Kate's Joy, Nikki Comagna, uh, the trainer for owner Bruno Comagna.
And uh, Bob McClure in the driver's seat for the victory, $46,000 yearling purchase. 57 and 3, uh, Mark. Again, we should reiterate that's a very impressive uh, final half speed on a day like today. It certainly is, and that was a good effort. You mentioned it as the hand drive, Bob McClure, the passenger coming to the line. And these connections seem to here coming through with a nice looking two year old early on in the season. You go back a couple of years, Capitano Italiano was one that I thought showed a bit of promise for them. So, uh, you, you know what? Kudos to them. They always seem to have something. A better joy looking at like a player be week one but that's a good looking performance he cranked it up there in the third quarter off a half of 101 and one got the three quarters in 129 and four five quarters 29 going that was a good performance from no better joy who is four full from all mayor ming got mayor forty six thousand dollar line in yearling sale purchase and certainly uh, a dominant victory there so uh so far through seven races uh, today, we've seen uh, a few themes. Obviously, uh, the wind has been a factor, so it's, it's affecting overall time. Uh, maybe not as flashy as you, you normally would see on, uh, on the first day of uh, qualifiers, but uh, those uh, races where you see a 28, 29 second final quarter uh, today, that's uh, maybe more impressive than it will look on paper and uh, some stallions making an impact uh, early on the program uh, today as well and certainly better than cheddar uh, has done that so far so you get the indication you might see good things from his offspring this year uh, in the oss program mark uh, has the rundown next from that seventh race Here's the order of finish from qualifier number seven. Number one, Mustang Beach was sixth. Number two, Desperado fourth. Number three, Bazooka Hanover third. Number four, Marlboro Sealster was fifth. Number five, Treasure Delight was seventh. Number six, Rito Sunshine eighth. Number seven, Major Mockover was second. And number eight, No Better Joy was the winner. Top to bottom, six, four, three, five, seven, eight, two, one. The winner, number eight, No Better Joy. Fractions were 31 and four, 101 and one. 129 and 4, 158 and 4 for No Better Joy. A two year old Colt by Better Than Cheddar, owned by Bruno Kamenya, trained by Nikki Kamenya, and driven to victory by Bob McClure, a $46,000 London Yearling Sale purchase. With seven qualifiers now down, we will now move on to a break here for this morning's action before we resume with qualifiers 8 through 14. Break time here this morning at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Yeah, call. Come on, Kim. So, welcome back uh, again. Great to have you uh, watching us on the, the various platforms uh, that we're broadcasting on this morning. Uh, it's wonderful, uh, obviously, with this current situation. Uh, still throughout North America, it's uh, not possible for people to be uh, on track uh, in terms of owners and uh, and race fans to watch the babies in action today. So uh, we are certainly uh, really happy to be able to bring this uh, to you today. Big thank you to uh, the Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, COSA, uh, for making this uh, possible. And the, of course, uh, the great team here at uh, Woodbine Mohawk Park for helping us out uh, on the technical side as well and uh, able to bring this coverage to you. And our uh, valued partners, hoofbid.com, of course, uh, Ontario uh, Racing as well. As Mark mentioned, we're going to take a break. Uh, 14 races in total today, seven in the books. Uh, the break here will be approximately 45 minutes to an hour. We have some feature content to, to help fill the time uh, for you here. And in the meantime as well, we're going to uh, thank some of our uh, sponsors and uh, we'll try and catch up with some of the connections here in just a few moments and work in uh, a few live interviews while we are on the break as well. So uh, we'll look forward to resuming uh, qualifying action here with uh, qualifier number eight coming out in approximately 45 minutes or so from now. So sit back and enjoy uh, the coverage. Again, you're watching COSA TV coverage of baby races from Mohawk Park.
Musa. The Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, proudly serving Ontario horse people with integrity and accountability. Collaborative, supportive, helping to ensure a vibrant harness racing industry, lifetime membership is free and there are many benefits. Become a new member today. COSA, representing the interests of horse people racing at Ontario racetracks. To find out more, visit COSAonline.com. Hi, my name is Brad Pinocchio. I do the starting at the Western Fair as well as Hiawatha Horse Park in Sari and Clinton Raceway uh, in the summer. Um, I was training a stable of horses and uh, I just um, thought that maybe a little more financial security with a steady job. So that's how I uh, went ahead and I wrote the starters exam and trained to become a starter. Ian Fleming was very valuable as a, like a liaison in that. Um, I had talked to him about it and then he said, well, there was definitely a need for starters. Um, he didn't know how soon I would be, get a, an opportunity, but he said there's certainly a need of all the jobs at the racetracks, uh, race secretaries and uh, paddock judges as well. By still having horses and training horses, I'm aware of the expenses and all the sacrifices that it comes to having horses, the investment of time, the dedication. So I think that's the thing is, I know when I race a horse or whatever, it's a, it's a, you work on, on the horses all week, but that day is all built on the fact you're racing a horse. And I have that, a real sense of that. And now with the financial um, structure of the business and what it costs to keep a horse, I feel that that's probably one of the biggest pressures I feel is make sure that everybody leaves feeling they got a good opportunity with their horse. There's a gentleman that steers the car and we have a hand accelerator with a cable that uh, is connected to the foot accelerator so he can feel the accelerator going down but from the moment the horses are picked up the speed is worked from the back of the car. We open and close the wings with the, I got a switch back here. So basically, in, in ideally, it's, you'd like to run it like a golf swing where you just continually pick up speed and flow away from the horses. You don't want to come up to start and then take off on them. You just want them to lead out on their front foot. So that's the thing is, uh, I, that's where in which the consistency comes with the speed of the gate. And you just try and have the same rhythm and cadence. Uh, obviously, um, you know, better courses may go uh, at a little quicker rate, but if you have the same rhythm, it, it works the best. And as far as when I get here, just to check the lights and check the wings and obviously make sure the horn and the, the speaker works and obviously have a two-way radio with the judges and make sure I make radio contact with them before we begin, begin the evening. We had one here about a month ago or whatever. We were just about to head down and get in position and the, the racetrack, racetrack lighting went out and it was dark. Like it was just, and it was just a very fortunate set of circumstances that um, the lights went out, It'd probably give it another 20 seconds and we're in motion with the horses behind the gate. It just uh, timings everything. And uh, I also have started uh, races on foggy nights and uh, it's a little unnerving. You can, you call them and you can, in the, you can't see with maybe, maybe 25 feet and you can hear them coming and you know, and then it's just basically they come out of the fog and they're there. <laughs> so I think that, you know, but after you've done it, you kind of get um, assimilated to it. But the first few times I did that, when you could hear them coming and you couldn't see them was definitely, uh, you know, a challenge. We have time parameters and uh, so when post time set and then the horse is post parade and then we get in position in the back stretch and we would be uh, two minutes out from post there so I give a two minute notice and then the horses this is where to the consistency and the rhythm that the horses start to come into position and then I'll say 30 seconds and then they, they basically, you know, they're well aware of what post position they have but when you call them in, you say if there's any scratches or, you know, anything, if there's a horse that's a trailer that maybe according to the program is not normal that would be trailing, you, you prize them of any different information and then basically, um, yeah, the, the lights are turned on and, the, and sound the horn and when the wings open, that's the thing is, 
I'm not one for halfway around the turn, tell them to get up in position. They know what is expected of them, and I don't want to disturb the other horses that are right and ready. And uh, But anyways, they have a very cooperative bunch, and basically that's the thing, isn't it, around the turn, it's all about just checking to see if anybody gets interfered with or broken equipment or all the criteria of a, of a recall. The drivers would feel that I'm there to cooperate with them, you know, and not on a power trip, it's just basically, you know, give everybody the best opportunity to make a living, and I think the thing is that, uh, you know, just uh, everybody, if they all cooperate, that's the best scenario. Enjoy the thrill of the race anywhere, anytime with HPIBet.com. Join for free and use your smartphone, tablet, or PC to watch and wager when you can't be at the track. Stream live racing from over 450 tracks. Bet with ease from anywhere. It's safe and secure. Get rewards, race alerts, tips, and more. For a limited time, get $100 when you become a member. Plus, one month free live race streaming and your first bet is on us. Go to HPIBet.com to join for free today. Hi, I'm Mark McKelvey, Manager of Communications and Content here at Woodbine Mohawk Park, and I'm the latest member of my family to get into the harness racing industry. It's foiled again, he's got the lead, deep stretch now, he's the iron horse, he's a legend, he's foiled again, foiled again to win at Mohawk Park. Well, I grew up obviously right around the racetrack here, uh, both of my parents were involved, and uh, for my family it goes back even further than that, multiple generations, but most direct. Uh, my grandparents, uh, one side of my family, my mom's father, uh, he raced horses. He had a farm in Dresden, raced horses from London to Windsor and everywhere in between. And on the other side of my family, my grandfather, uh, my dad's side, uh, he was involved in running the racetrack in Owen Sound in the 60s and 70s and then owned horses for a long time as well. So uh, I get it right through. Uh, it's in my blood. Grew up here at the racetrack and a lot of my earliest memories were right here at Mohawk. Well, like a lot of people, I was born into the industry. My parents, uh, from, since the time I was born, have been working for uh, Woodbine Entertainment. My mom works for Standard Break Canada. My mom, Lori, she's been a field rep with them uh, since, I believe, the 80s and uh, has been here at Mohawk Park and Woodbine for quite some time. So I uh, came to work with her a lot, and a lot of times there was that changeover where she was coming at night for the races, and my dad, who uh, Scott, who's the race secretary and has been since uh, 1993, um, he would take us home, so I really got it honestly where my parents were both here and bringing my sister and I around the racetrack right from the time we were born. I think when you're growing up and you're coming to the racetrack all the time, it just kind of becomes routine and it just becomes a part of your life. But for me, probably the, the memories that stick out the most would be when uh, racing moved to Mohawk in the summertime in the mid-2000s. and I was getting old enough to decide um, what I wanted to do. I didn't have to tag along with my parents to work or, or be at home. And I was still making that decision that I wanted to come to the racetrack. And many nights I'd just park myself on the rail right at the finish line with my program and pen. And uh, from there, the bug just uh, it stuck with me. I was uh, fascinated by all aspects of the industry, and I can remember a lot of summer nights, Fridays and Saturdays, being right there on the rail watching the racing. Hanover second on the outside, Yankee Skyscaper badly beaten, the driving off winner in Cup 24. Here it is, Jameson and Burgess and Tell All, celebration time in Cup 24. Yeah, I don't take it for granted, the, the opportunities that I've had so far. Uh, you know, again, I've only been out of school for almost six years now, but uh, right away I landed a position with the communications team at Woodbine Entertainment, and that role has grown, and, and I've uh, continued to grow in that role over the last almost now six years. Um, day to day, it's a lot about, um, again, when you're doing communications and media, you're trying to spread the word, you're trying to raise awareness, um, and you're working uh, towards growing the sport and growing what we're doing here at Woodbine Entertainment. And I think uh, I've seen from where I started to where I am now a lot of growth personally and a lot of growth uh, with this company and where we're trying to take racing. I caught the bug for broadcasting at a young age and it was actually uh, not through the racetrack but through hockey and when I was growing up I did a lot of timekeeping and scorekeeping in Milton 
and uh, one year I started doing the timekeeping for the local junior hockey team and uh, as it would be and how things always seem to turn out, uh, the announcer quit and they just handed me the microphone and I really enjoyed it and uh, luckily I was able to take that passion and bring it over here to Woodbine Entertainment. Uh, I spent one summer interning doing interviews and then uh, through my role with the communications department I've been able to do a lot of work on our simulcast show, call races and uh, continue to add to my uh, portfolio and, and to my arsenal and what I can do and what I can bring to the team here. Hancock passes over to Suzuki. Suzuki across. McKenzie scores! Brett McKenzie, the overtime hero, and the attack come back and win game number two. Yeah, I've been with the Owen Sound Attack as a broadcaster with them for five seasons now and uh, it's been an absolute blast. Uh, I think that's probably my uh, dream job when I was growing up was to be calling NHL games and to have the opportunity to call at a very high level like the Ontario Hockey League is a, a lot of fun and I'm fortunate that uh, the team here at Woodbine allows me to pursue that, uh, that opportunity as well. Uh, calling games, uh, it's something I can remember doing when I was a youngster in front of the TV or even out in the driveway when you're playing road hockey and you're announcing to yourself. So I have a lot of fun doing that and I personally think I have the best of both worlds being able to work in harness racing and in hockey. A lot of people ask uh, probably why I haven't taken sort of that plunge into doing broadcasting full time and I think it's uh, being able to be kind of behind the scenes and, and put everything together here, being a part of what brings uh, live racing here at Woodbine Mohawk Park together and whether that's our major events or just day-to-day -day racing, uh, I like being involved in, in the decision-making process and seeing things through. Uh, I think that's one of the best parts of my job is being in that planning stage, coming up with an idea, working with others and, and that's the other thing. I love working with people, I love socializing and we've got a great team here so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun when you do see that plan come together and whether it's a big event like the Breeders' Crown for example, uh, that to me is uh, some of the biggest thrills is just seeing it all come together and all go off without a hitch. Uh, a lot of times getting away from the racetrack for me is going to other racetracks. You know, a lot of vacations turn into where's the local track and uh, can we check it out. But it is something that I adjusted to early on uh, and it's something that I adjusted to before I even got this job was that when you work in an industry like this or the sports industry, uh, it's not a regular schedule, it's not routine and um, never once uh, have I ever complained about not having Saturday nights off or anything like that. Uh, if I did have a Saturday night off, I'd probably find myself at the racetrack. So uh, because of that, I've never uh, been disappointed that, I've, you know, you have to miss events here and there, but ultimately um, this is where I want to be and I'm very happy to be here. For Lindblom, a hit, they got it back over for a Favorite broadcaster for me, I probably, on the hockey side of things, I've always uh, idolized uh, Doc Emmerich calls games for NBC, uh, the way that he tells the story uh, with his own unique flair. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of his, but ultimately I like to take little bits from different broadcasters and kind of create my own style. I don't think you can imitate one person that doesn't work that way, but uh, you can pick up pieces you can learn from every single broadcaster out there. I think there's a big opportunity in harness racing to gain younger fans. I think the future is bright, but I think we have to be willing to change and we have to be able to take things from other industries and see what they're doing to attract younger people. Uh, working in media, social media is so huge and we have to make sure we're taking full advantage of it. You know, we're trying our best here at Woodbine Entertainment and sometimes, uh, as we've all learned in this industry, uh, People can be afraid of change, but if you can make a good case and you can show that the results are, are going to turn out, uh, I think we have a big opportunity here. But uh, as a young person, I'm always trying to introduce my friends uh, to the races and when you do bring them to the track and, and you see them start to understand it, it can be complicated, it can be really intimidating, but when you see it start to click and they start to understand a little bit of it and uh, maybe start to catch that bug, uh, there's no better feeling than that. And I know they've always said, uh, where's that next generation going to come from? But uh, I think as long as we are stay up with the times, it'll, it'll find us. They're in the stretch of the Meadowlands pace. 
Dorso, Duro, Hanover, game first over. Courtly Choice off that cover has open road. Stay hungry, full out on the outside in deep stretch. Courtly Choice inches clear. It's Courtly Choice and the Buckeye Hall of Famer Dave Miller does it. Courtly Choice. Well, when I was a kid, my dad uh, had horses as a, as a side part. We kept them at Dana Lloyd's place. So after school, I'd go out and help out and doing everything. And I was in university and. I dropped out at Christmas and needed something to do, and uh, I said to Dad, "I'm going to go down to Windsor and uh, and uh, race some horses, take some down." And he said, "Okay." He thought I'd be done in three months, be home, and be back in school, and go into insurance and do it with him. Well, 20 some years later, I'm I'm here sitting, and you know we we've done well, and we you know I'm glad I did what I did. Uh, you couldn't have asked for a better place, you know, we had stabling right on the track and that's where I met Mark, you know, Mark and I have been, Mark McDowell and I have been best friends for 20 some years and, uh, you know, we had a lot of good times, a lot of fun and, you know, there's a lot of good guys down there. You know, we started getting into younger horses and uh, getting into the, the babies really helped. Uh, we sort of found our niche that way. Um, claimers weren't in my game, you know, I didn't do as good with the claimers as I've done with the babies. You know, and you, you start getting on a roll with the, you know, a couple cheap ones here and there, and, you know, we paid 1,500, about three or four of them, and they went on to make three, 400,000. One made, one was Bullet Point. She was our first big one. You know, we paid 1,500 for her, and she made close to 700,000. And from there, it just, you know, mushroomed into more and more and, and uh, better and better. So we've got about a total of 75 horses in training. Uh, we've got uh, 55 here, around 55, 56 here, and close to 20 in the States. Uh, Jessica Dos is my head trainer down there. Francis Dumachon is my head trainer up here. Uh, when I'm on the road, e at either stable, those two are in charge. And, uh, you know, we've got mostly all the babies up here at this time of the year. So there's 43 babies this year. And uh, they're all up here with me. Jess has most of the racehorses down there uh, for the winter time so that we're not, you know, I can concentrate on the babies up here and then I'll go down there every two to three weeks during the winter time to check on the racehorses and see how they are and, and train the three-year-olds that we have down there coming back. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big operation and it's a, a lot of long days and a lot of frustrating days, but you know, when stake season comes around, it, it seems to be all worth it right now. It's level up, Courtly Choice, Dorsoduro, Hanover with a rush, three of them across the track, who's it going to be? It's Courtly Choice! I think as a two-year-old we thought he could be a really nice horse. Um, first time qualified, I mean, he qualified great. Um, and uh, training down, he was always a little lazy. Um, Mike Pennington trained most of the time for me because Mike gets a little more out of the lazy ones than me. Um, he, he was a big... Big, uh, Mike was a big reason that horse made as much as he did. Um, I'll give credit to, to the guys that work for me, the ones that take care of them. Uh, it was, uh, you know, once we got behind the gate, he, he bravened up a little more. And then, you know, as a two-year-old, he was sort of fumbly gated and, and wasn't as good gated as he was as a three-year-old. And uh, he really improved a lot from two to three, but we could see that training back. Uh, he had set the track right as a two-year-old and won some minor stakes, but uh, we had um, paid him in all the major stakes of the three-year-old because of his breeding, because he was Cheddar's brother and, and Ashley's big guy's brother, and, and uh, we never gave up on him in that way. Um, but as a three-year-old training back, he was just a totally different horse. You could just see like, he had lost the laziness and he'd wanted, he wanted to do it more. Um, I remember James coming out and training him one day and he told everybody in the driver's room that Blake's got a three-year-old coming back, training great. And everybody's like, ah, you know, he'll just, when he gets to the races, he'll just be the same lazy horse, but he wasn't. And he just started, you know, he turned into be a, you know, just a dream horse for me. And something that I'll probably never achieve again, but, you know, very happy with him. Uh, going into it, we drew the rail. I remember just thinking, oh my God, this, you know, we could win the jug. And then about 15 seconds into the elimination, I was just sick you know most people know I have a temper and everybody probably thought I was throwing myself but I wasn't I just I was just like are you kidding me and uh, I seen Dave get him back on stride and 
And when he caught the field, I was like, well, you know, we could make the we could make the final here, and we could be fourth, you know. And Jess and I were standing beside each other, and I said, you know, we, we could be fourth, you know. And then you're sitting there, and he's moving up and moving up, and then all of a sudden it was a photo, you know, coming to the wire of the elimination. You're like, holy Christ, we could have won that. And then there was the inquiry, and you know, all the things that happened. We didn't know where we'd finish, and everybody told us that we were going to be placed first. And we were placed second in the elimination, which was probably better because we didn't get the rail again, which, you know, he could make a break off the rail again and we would have been lost. And then, you know, in the final there, it was just, I just, you were just sitting there and you're just watching down the backside, you know, I'm, st I'm standing down the, at the gate there, down the backside, and I see him drifting out like three wide. And I, it was Jason McGinnis and Kirby McGinnis beside me. And I was like, ah. Oh, we're done, you know, you're done. And then all of a sudden, he just kept going and you're like, oh my God, we could win, we could win. And you're just screaming, you know, like you're, like I, I'm an emotional person. I scream and I was yelling and screaming and swearing. And then he got up, you know, and you're just like, you hear Roger Houston say, and Courtly Choice is up and you're like, oh my God, you know, it was just the biggest day of my life. You know, like we'd won the, pace earlier in the year like don't get me wrong like pace was unbelievable that was a big high but to win the jug you're just sort of like oh my god we, we just won a little brown jug and uh it's just everybody being there was just so much fun you know it's just great the uh the four-year-old campaign we weren't going we were going to stud last year uh when we got him to stud his numbers were, were, weren't very good uh, for breeding uh, purposes. So he was originally, so we needed to geld him, not geld him, but to remove the one ball that was up in, the one testicle was up inside him. Uh, we decided to bring him back for next year and race him. So we raced him. Um, started out the year great. Um, when the first um, graduate, it was dominant. Dave said he's the best he's ever been. He qualified great. We shift him back up here for the Confed Cup, and he doesn't make the final. Probably one of the biggest disappointments of my career. The Flambeau Downs is right there. I grew up watching that race. I want to win that race. More than anything I've ever wanted to race, win race, like other than North American Cup. I know it sounds stupid, but it's a local race. It's a race that I grew up watching. I want to win that race. And he didn't make the final. I remember driving out, and me and and I were watching the 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 feed on my phone, and we lost out on the draw. We tried to figure out what was wrong with him. Didn't race well for a couple of weeks. You know, we sent him back down the states, and he still wasn't himself. He was just sort of mediocre. And we came back up here for the for the pace, and. Uh, we raced him twice in the, the open and he, he raced huge. Uh, two, two weeks in a row, you know, we just gave him a little time, gave him a little breather and, you know, he won the open two weeks in a row and he was just, just a different horse. And uh, going to the pace, I thought, you know, we could, we have a good shot. And then down the backside, James had him out of position and I'm like, what are you doing? I was just, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, we're not gonna get a check. Top of the lane, he, he flipped him off cover and he was gone. Killer. I was just, to win a big race at home is just special, especially with like one of my good friends, James McDonald, you know, I don't know Dave's a great friend too, but, you know, I give James a big, you know, that was probably one of his career highlights too, and for us both to win it, and, and uh, after Dave picked off for McWicket, it was just, just so, it was a relief, you know, like we could breathe because we expected this horse to be a top horse this year, and then after that, it was, more disappointed for the year. It was an up and down season, but uh, he'll throw in a good one here and there. And it was just a year, weird year for him. Um, he's a great horse. He always came up big in the big races. It seemed like um, he he just you know he had some health issues last year, and we couldn't get him straightened out the whole year. You know we'd get his blood one way right the one week, and then he'd drop back down. And it was just. Um, just a fight all year with him, with his blood. Uh, you know, now, now he's at stud. His numbers are really good after we removed the, removed the testicle. Uh, he's 
he's breeding this year and he's got you know a book around 80 mares and you know hopefully we'll keep going forward and, and he'll become a, a good sire.
and welcome back to the baby races this morning at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Uh, it's been a lot of fun so far, seven in the books, and uh, we're on our break right now. Seven more races set to come here shortly. And uh, while we have a moment, we're joined by a special guest, driver Sylvain Filion. Already a couple of uh, winners this morning, Sylvain, for you. And let's talk about uh, both of them. Uh, first of all, a son of state treasurer called Between I and You. Uh, had to be happy with his effort this morning? Yeah, I thought he, he was pretty good. Uh, I trained him a couple of weeks ago uh, over at Bay Carnes and he, uh, he looked pretty good. So this morning I didn't really uh, know what to expect, you know, first time behind the gate and all, but uh, he reacted pretty good. We sat, uh, I think, fourth the whole way and I tipped him around the last turn and he cleared and he... Uh, even that strong headwind, you know, he kept pacing through the wire, so that's good. What do you like best about this Colt at this stage? Uh, I mean, um, everything you ask him, he does. He, uh, he doesn't have uh, many faults to him. Uh, he's big, strong, and uh, willing to, to do it. And another one you won with uh, one race later, Twinby Heartthrob, uh, son of Better Than Cheddar. Uh, I thought this guy was really impressive, uh, really strong on the end of the mile uh, for you. Uh, just your assessment of his performance? Yeah, he's uh, he's slick gated, you know, and he uh, he can leave the gate pretty fast. I had a big hold of him uh, leaving the gate. I didn't want him to get too excited. Uh, we had to cut it out. There wasn't much speed in there, but uh, he was really impressive. He uh, he doesn't seem like he goes fast when you sit behind him, but he really does. Uh, he, he was quite impressive this morning. Both winners from the Wayne McGean stable and uh, horses you said you had sat behind before today in, in training at the farm. So how much uh, of an advantage is that and, and how confident were you that they were going to come here today and be ready to go? Well, it's always good to train uh, the Colts before you bring them in here and uh, go behind the gate. You, you get to know them, you know, if they had any uh, things you need to know about them. like. Uh, they're afraid of shadows and stuff like that. That's very important. Uh, but them two guys, they were really, uh, really handy today. They uh, they acted like age horses. You got to give credit to the trainer for the job he's done with them too. And for those watching today that maybe can't tell visually, it's pretty windy and cool out there today as well. How much should we factor that into the overall times today? Oh, it's a, it's a huge factor. The, the wind there really affects, especially the young horses. So uh, I would say there's almost uh, a full second to two seconds slower than usual with the wind and the uh, weather factor. Yeah. Early to assess perhaps, but what do you think these Colts uh, are going to be, at least initially? Are we looking at, at grassroots, gold potential Colts? What do you think? Well, hopefully it'll be gold. I mean, uh, you always uh, aim for gold, but... Uh, I guess we'll know better in a couple of weeks. It's tough to evaluate uh, early on like this. Yeah. And just a final thought while we have you. Obviously, we are under really unique circumstances. Uh, here we are, we're talking, we're about 10 feet apart and, uh, <laughs> and practicing our social distancing, which is great. But uh, despite that, still a lot of excitement, isn't there, to come out here on days like this and get to see the babies the first time behind the gate. Oh, absolutely. You know, it feels good to be here, be back in action. Uh, we're missing the fans, but uh, it should be soon before they can come out and uh, enjoy the, the show here. Uh, but I mean, it's really, you can see the, the people, they're all happy to be here and uh, just glad to be racing. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes uh, out of your morning to chat with us and good luck in the back half of the program this morning. Thank you very much. Have a good Driver day. Sylvain Filion, he's already guided a couple of impressive winners. And uh, as mentioned, we have 14 qualifiers in total coming your way this morning. Uh, we are on our break right now to anticipate in another 15 or 20 minutes resuming action with the second half of today's baby races from Mohawk Park. So we'll take another break and be back with more in just a few moments.
Paddock location here at uh, Woodbine Mohawk Park. Greg Blanchard, uh, wonderful to have you joining us again for today's 14 race uh, baby race session uh, here at the Campbellville Oval. And uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch so far. Again, a day where uh, typically at this time of year it would be absolutely bustling on a morning like today as uh, people clamor to watch uh, these youngsters in action. Of course, we are unable uh, to do that at this point in time. So uh, we are, are pleased to be able to uh, bring you this uh, live coverage today. Mark McKelvey has been with me all morning long uh, and uh, we've been able to connect with him. He's been calling the action as well. And uh, Mark, here we get set to go. Uh, good news is temperatures warmed up a little bit since we first signed on this morning and the wind has died down, believe it or not, slightly as well. So looking forward to a back half of what's already been a really entertaining uh, qualifying session. Yeah, it has been, and we got seven more to go. They'll be all pacers for this back half of this qualifying session. We saw in the first three qualifiers this morning the Trotters, but it's been all pacers since. And I thought those were some good comments we got from driver Sylvan Philly on uh, when you caught up with him just a few moments ago. And uh, he really put it in perspective just kind of the conditions everyone's dealing with today. And uh, you can still hear that wind howling, but uh, I'll take your word for it. I'm not feeling it up here in the booth, but I'll take your word that it is uh, lightening up a little bit. Definitely getting warmer, though. You can see the sun starting to shine even more. Yeah, I'm not shivering like I was uh, an hour ago. So uh, that's the good news. And uh, yeah, we've got another good looking field of uh, eight getting set to go. Uh, the star of the show, uh, if you want to call it that, to this point in the day has been uh, Sire better than Cheddar. A couple of impressive uh, winners. Uh, first crop stallion, state treasurers had a winner on the card. Of course, old reliable sports writer uh, with a winner as well. So it's been kind of a mixed bag here and we'll see both sports writer and better than Cheddar represented in the upcoming eighth. Yeah, we, well, we're getting set to go here, but we're having a little bit of difficulty with number three. He's my buddy at the moment, trying to get him turned towards the gate. Uh, there's no changes in this uh, eighth qualifier, at least no scratches. Looks like number three, he's my buddy, is going to be ready to go. But I'm uh, interested to watch this one, if I was going to key in on one. How about number two? That is the Fat Cobra. Oh, of always be first crop of always be mickey hasn't yelled it already but little miss dragon is a real good performer this is the dam she made uh close to eight hundred thousand dollars for the grand circuit star fifteen thousand dollar purchase for the stable we saw them in the trots see if they can get one, one here in the Starting gate beginning to move for our eighth qualifier as we resume this morning's action here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. One driver note, number five, Blue Monk, will be driven by Mario Bayarjan. Here's the field of eight for qualifier number eight, two-year-old Pacers. Number one, Frank DeFord is a two-year-old Colt by sports writer, owned by Daniel Plouffe, along with Jean Christophe Plouffe and Blake McIntosh. McIntosh trains. James McDonald drives a $19,000 Lexington purchase. Two is the Fat Cobra, a gelded son of Always Be Mickey, owned by the stable, the Fat Cobra. Trained by Amy McDonald. Anthony McDonald drives a $15,000 Lexington buy. Three, He's My Buddy, is a two-year-old quote by Sunshine Beach, owned by Roger Gebhardt who's also the trainer, Sylvan Filion drives. Four is Vino Louie, sports writer Colt, owned by Claire Bradshaw and Brian Jameson. Bradshaw trains. Scott Young drives a $30,000 London buy. Five Blue Monk is an up-the-credit Colt owned by Robert Burgess, trained by Mario Bayergeon. He'll also do the driving. Six in this group is Drowns Low Whiskey, owned by Joanne Coville, Nancy McNeven, along with Bernard Murphy and Robbie Wibbawa, Jack Moise of Trains, Phil Houdon Drives, Seven Major Motion, an art major cult owned by Hut Racing Stable, Steve Heimbecker and Blake McIntosh. McIntosh Trains, Doug McNair Drives, a $40,000 Lexington Buy. And number eight is Tooney Teen, a sports writer cult owned and bred by Patty Jones, Rod Boyd Trains, and the driver is Mike Saftick. So there's your group of eight for qualifier number eight. We resume the action here this morning at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Once again, thanks for joining us, whether you're watching on the Woodbine Mohawk Park YouTube channel or those of you tuning in for this live baby race coverage on COSA TV. Starting gate to the top of the stretch, field is picking up speed, and here they come.
And they're off and pacing from the inside, the quickest away. That is going to be from the center, Blue Monk, who will actually out sprint the inside two of the Fat Cobra and Frank DeFord. Settling into the pylons in the moment fourth, that is He's My Buddy. On the outside is Vino Louie. Then it is Tooney Teen, who gets ahead of a couple rivals and drowns the whiskey in major motion. They're into the first turn, and by Arjan put the Blue Monk up top. And here's Blue Monk heading to the opening quarter. He's the son of Up the Credit, leads by a length and a half over the Fat Cobra. Opening quarter was paced in 30 and 4. So this group of eight will swing into the backstretch. A length and a half advantage for Blue Monk. Right on the leaders back in second is the Fat Cobra. Racing in third is Frank DeFore. Then it's two and a half lengths back to He's My Buddy in fourth. Tracked fifth by Vino Louis. A pair of lengths going back to Tooney Teen who is sixth. Seventh is Drowns the Whiskey. And eighth at the back is Major Motion. No movement in the second quarter. Blue Monk calling the shots off a 30 and 4 opening quarter. He'll take them past the midway point in a minute and one. So 101 ends up being that time. So that's 30 and 1 in the second quarter. So a half of 101. Couple taps here for Blue Monk as he looks to continue with this front end mission. But he's got some company. Here comes a rush from Vino Louie. And Vino Louie quickly moves up to confront the leader. The Fat Cobra is now in third, putting in a couple awkward steps. In behind is Frank DeFord. Then it is He's My Buddy, followed by... Tooney Teen drowns the whiskey. Major motion. Three-quarter time, 130 and two. So the Blue Monk got confronted, picks it back up. Vino Louie will dip in behind. He's now a length and a half away as Blue Monk is trying to close this one out. Blue Monk, Vino Louie on the outside. Out in the center of the track comes Frank DeFord, dipping to the pylons. He's my buddy, and in the middle is the Fat Cobra. 16th to go. Vino Louie on the outside takes a short lead. Blue Monk is trying to battle back. It's Vino Louie, the son of sports writer, to win. Blue Monk finishes in second. He's My Buddy was third. Frank DeFord was fourth. Drowns the Whiskey rushed up to get fifth. Then it was the Fat Cobra, Tooney Teen, and Major Motion 159 and three for Vino Louie. Vino Louie kicks home in 58 and three. The son of sports writer giving that stallion his second winning credit uh, this morning. And uh, this guy going to get done for driver Scott Young, trainer Claire Bradshaw. Claire co-owns with uh, Brian Jamison of Simcoe. And Vino Louie uh, converting here and getting it done, uh, hauling down a blue monk, the son of up the credit, who raced well uh, in addition to that. So there you go again, uh, Mark, a sports writer, coming back and clicking for his second winner of the morning session. Uh, kind of the beat goes on for him. Certainly does. That's uh, a nice effort from Vino Louie in the third quarter. It looked pretty impressed on the way back and came with a the blue monk found a little more, fought him off for a second, and then in the stretch, Vino Louie is able to power on by Vino Louie, a thirty thousand dollar London selected yearling sale purchase, fifth full out of a blissful hall mare named Wilma Hall. And I think connection. That's thinking earlier on during our break was the fact that although they're big, it's going to be hard to ground in the stretch. And still is able to sustain in the stretch. Uh, I think that's default to we saw here. You know, Horses and drivers are now stepping onto the track for qualifier number nine. We'll have a field of seven going to the post this time on the pace. Another uh, really interesting group. Uh, the post two starters, Victory Move from the Blake McIntosh stable. Victory Move, a son of American Ideal. Uh, Blake spoke about him on our preview show Wednesday night. Uh, $65,000 yearling uh, from Irene on the Move. She's a daughter of Powerful Toy. Delaware bred mare, one of the the, the great uh, Delaware bred mares, uh, $800,000 career winner. And this uh, son of American ideal, uh, according to Blake, uh, has been uh, one of his better ones training down. So watching from him today from post two. Uh, Sylvain Filion was on moments ago and was uh, telling me 
off camera that uh, Dragon Teen, the one that he sits up behind here, a son of he's watching, has uh, impressed him in a couple of uh, times that he sat behind him in training early in the morning for uh, Rod Boyd. Trained him, uh, I believe, in 2.02 uh, the other day and uh, expects that he'll be ready to go in his qualifying effort here in the upcoming ninth. Uh, Blake also talked about Old Joe, another one that he sends out postward here. Uh, interesting, Mark. Uh, he didn't have great things to say about uh, the horse in terms of how they got along, and that was interesting, and that's uh, it's, uh, one of the great things about when you get to talk to somebody, uh, you know, about the behind the scenes of these horses training down. He said, hey, you know, you, trainers and, and certain horses just uh, don't see eye to eye, so he quickly identified that and uh, let uh, some, of, uh, some of his stable uh, help handle the training duties of this guy uh, most of the way down, and uh, he said uh, the reports he's been getting <laughs> have been good on old Joe, and uh, he's looking forward to watching him in action today. Just a $14,000 a year link purchase, this guy. And uh, yeah, just another uh, really intriguing group here facing the starting gate, uh, Mark, in the ninth. And before we move on to the ninth qualifier, let's go back and take a look at the results from qualifier number eight. Number one, Frank DeFord was fourth. Number two, the Fat Cobra, six. Number three, He's My Buddy, third. Number four, Vino Louie, the winner. Number five, Blue Monk, second. Number six, Drowns the Whiskey, fifth. Number seven, Major Motion, eighth. And number eight, Tooney Teen was seventh. Four, six, three, one, two, five, eight, seven. Fractions were 30 and four. 101, 130 and three. 159 and three for the winner, number four, Vino Louie. A two-year-old colt by sports writer owned by Claire Bradshaw and Brian Jameson. Bradshaw trains Scott Young Drove, a $30,000 London selected yearling sale purchase. So starters now stepping onto the track uh, for this upcoming ninth. Uh, another one to have a look at is number five, uh, tough enough to wear pink, son of Better's Delight. And this one, uh, homebred of uh, Joanne Coville's high stakes stable and uh, the mare cowgirl tough only eight starts mark and uh, she she was a uh, one that had a lot of talent only eight career starts as mentioned made seventy thousand dollars certainly had a lot of ability but uh, the career cut short and this is the first full uh, from that one uh, teaming up with betters delight uh, you can't go wrong there so uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, how this one performs this morning yeah, it is, and that's uh, something that I always look at when you're going through the horses and the baby races is to see those first foals. Um, sometimes, you know, you can kind of get an opinion based on one that maybe comes from an older family and the performer before, but I think a lot of time with those first foals, you got to, A, look at see what the dam did, and in some situations, either they didn't race or they were lightly raced, so you wonder how that will play into, uh, you know, potential factor, obviously, uh, every bloodline is different, but I think for this uh, horse, for example, Better's Delight, the top, top stallion in our game. And as you mentioned, I think the potential was there for that dam. So we'll see what we get from Tough Enough to Wear Pink. You go back to the last qualifier, those connections sent out Drowns the Whiskey, who I thought paced a nice last quarter. A few spots that have been tough to make up some ground in the lane. So uh, they had a good one in the eighth. We'll see what they can do here in the ninth. No free lunch, number six. Uh, and again, uh, we had a lot of fun on our uh, preview show of the baby races uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, we caught up with uh, Blake McIntosh and Anthony McDonald, uh, two gentlemen that we knew would be extremely busy today, uh, sending out a number of starters. So uh, we had a chance to, to chat about many of them that we are seeing uh, today. A no free lunch was one of those, a Sunshine Beach gelding that uh, Anthony said has been uh, doing everything right uh, training down comes from uh, a pretty solid pedigree as well the dam simply marvelous was a regular uh, here that we watched uh, in the top uh, pacing mare ranks on the wag circuit for a number of years and uh, daryl kaplan good friend of ours uh, part of the uh, the breeding and ownership group on this one daryl of course managing editor at uh, trot magazine and uh, dabbling now in the breeding game and uh, has a youngster here that i'm sure he's excited to watch uh, this morning as well and then there's beef and cheddar mark on the outside and we've talked about it uh, better than cheddar making an impact uh, in today's session certainly with a pair of winners already 
Yes, certainly. James McDonald is actually going to drive B finish here. Louis Wall will drive the four. Of Piper notes here for this ninth ball. Fire the new beginning. Also, let's meet the field. Qualifier number Qualifier. nine, number one is Magnum Moon, a two year old colt by Shadow Play, owned by James Wellwood, Jeffrey Wellwood, and BC Reich held stables, trained by James Wellwood, driven by Jody Jamison, a $27,000 yearling purchase at the Lexington sale. Two is Victory Move, a two year old colt by American Ideal, owned by Hut Racing Stable, and Steve Heimbecker, along with trainer Blake McIntosh. The driver's Doug McNair, a $65,000 Lexington buy. Three is Dragon Tina, homebred for Bob Key. He's watching colt, trained by Rod Boyd, and driven by by Sylvan Fillion. Four is Old Joe, a roll with Joe Colt, owned by Hut Racing Stable, Steve Heimbecker, Blake McIntosh, McIntosh Trains, Louis Waugh Drives. This was a $14,000 Goshen yearling sale buy. Five, Tough Enough to Wear Pink, a Better's Delight Colt, owned by High Stakes, Rolling Hills Racing, along with Emma Christopheru, trained by Jack Moisea, Phil Houdon Drives. Six, No Free Lunch, Sunshine Beach Gelding, owned by the Stable, No Free Lunch, trained by Anthony McDonald, he'll also drive. And to complete the field, number seven, Beef and Cheddar, a gelded son of Better Than Cheddar, owned by the stable Beef and Cheddar, along with Matthew Chapel, trained by Anthony McDonald, James McDonald, Will Steer. Field of seven for qualifier number nine. Gate swings into the stretch. They're picking up speed, and here they come. And they're off and pacing. From the middle, there's Old Joe, who is able to split rivals and charge out to the early lead. Victory move is at the inside second. And from mid-pack, here is no free lunch. Inside fourth is Dragon Teen at the rails, Magnum Moon, then being followed by Tough Enough to Wear Pink, and Beef and Cheddar started from the outside and takes to the back in the early going. They're into the first turn. No shadows anymore here as the sun continues to move, so the rookie Pacers hug the rail to the opening quarter. The only one that didn't in that 31-3 and three opening quarter was no free lunch, but no free lunch has now cleared to command. They swing into the back stretch a two-length advantage here for no free lunch. Racing in second is Old Joe, and now getting underway from third here comes victory move and victory move is on the march now for mcnair back and forth is dragon teen racing in fifth is magnum moon sixth up the back stretch tough enough to wear pink and to the outside at the back beef and cheddar looks to go around that rival the half is hit in one minute and four fifths and now we have a new leader in the form of victory move and victory move hopes that was the winning move in the middle half as he's up to claim the lead and the son of american ideal rolls them into the far turn no free lunches in second sitting on the leaders back then in third as they head towards three quarters is old joe tightening up from in fourth is dragon teen followed fifth by magnum moon sixth is beef and cheddar and seventh is tough enough to wear pink in the two hole already angling out once again no free lunch is going to look to reclaim that top spot from victory move 130 and for the three quarter time 30 seconds even in the third quarter at the inside victory move and on the outside no free lunch has gone right back to the top off, and it's no free lunch who claims the lead once again with an eighth of a mile to go victory move is in second old joe in third magnum moon back in fourth no free lunch to score finishing in second victory move third was old joe then it was magnum moon followed by beef and cheddar tough enough to wear pink and dragon teen 158 and four for no free lunch No free lunch, turning in a snappy 28 second final quarter and stops the clock in 158 and four to capture qualifier number nine. A Sunshine Beach gelding from the Western Maverick mare, simply marvelous. Uh, we touched on this one just prior uh, to the gate rolling and uh, Anthony McDonald uh, training and uh, in the driver's seat uh, this morning as well. And Mark, uh, from my vantage point, this uh, gelding seemed pretty much in hand at the wire. Yeah, sure thought so. You could tell he was ready to go back on as they were coming to three quarters. I mentioned it in the call. Didn't stay right on the leader's back. They, he was ready to angle out and uh, quickly reclaims that lead and paces home nicely for the score. He'll get a last quarter charted in about 27 and 4, 27 and 3, which is a real good last quarter here this morning. And as you talked about, comes from a family that, uh, you know, on paper, Gives him a ton of fun. 
Tess and 6-4 from Simply Marvelous, who, you know, you talked about her resume and what we saw from her, $350,000 made and 101 starts and uh, no free lunch gets his connections a victory. And for the stable.ca, we talked about them having success with the Trotters. Well, they get one here on the pace. So congratulations again to uh, our friend Daryl Kaplan, along with uh, the Blue Oak Stable and Harbhajan Singh, who were the uh, breeders of this one. And the Stable No Free Lunch group is the ownership uh, on No Free Lunch. And yeah, looking forward to seeing this one. And uh, a lot of these youngsters in action uh, when the first stakes of the season hit here in Ontario and uh, be interesting to watch them sort themselves out as well for the first couple of times uh, between grassroots and those gold divisions. We continue on, 14 in total this morning. Qualifier 10 is on deck and we're looking at the two-year-old Philly Pacers this time. And uh, a number of sires represented in uh, this particular contest to always be Mickey. Uh, sends another one out here in Grace Hill, the number four uh, from the great pacing mare Western Silk, a career winner of $1.7 million. And uh, she has already produced Annie Hill, uh, one that we've seen on the Grand Circuit and uh, a winner of 200000 herself. And this one, uh, a solid $75,000 yearling purchase mark. Dan Legacy sends this one out with James McDonald listed to drive. With uh, a dam like that, you have to have promise if you're the connections and hope that she can be something special as well. The driver this morning will end up being Bob, Bob so it looks like James will stick with Blake McIntosh. He sports who will start from the rail. So Bob McClure will pick up the drive. And the one thing about Bob and uh, the young horses is, uh, you know, he never hurts them, that's for sure. And uh, I think we'll probably see a bit of a cautious approach here, but I'll be curious to see what we get from Grace Hill finishing up her mile as she'll start right from pretty much uh, the middle of this group of seven. Let's go back to the ninth qualifier now and check out the results. We'll go top to bottom here. Results from the ninth. Number one, Magnum Moon was fourth. Number two, Victory Move was second. Number three, Dragon Team was seventh. Number four, Old Joe was third. Number five, Tough Enough to Wear Pink was sixth. Number six, No Free Lunch, the winner. And number seven, Beef and Cheddar was fifth. Four, two, seven, three, six, one, five is your order of finish. 31 and three, a minute four fifths. 130 and four, 158 and four for the winner number six, No Free Lunch. A two-year-old gelded son of Sunshine Beach, owned by the stable, No Free Lunch, trained and driven to victory by Anthony McDonald. There's your field page for the upcoming 10th uh, race. As mentioned, a field of seven. And uh, we got you updated there on that driver change. It's going to be Bob McClure now uh, sitting behind the number four, Grace Hill, that uh, daughter of Always Be Mickey. A sports writer has clicked for a pair of winners already and a sports duchess is uh, one that uh, is sired by sports writer that we'll see in the upcoming 10th race uh, from My Ideal, a daughter of Western Ideal. And uh, I believe Blake uh, campaigned uh, that mare, so uh, he'll be interested to, to see, I'm sure, this uh, how this mating ends up with Sports Duchess uh, from post number one. This is one that we didn't uh, talk about on the preview show, so I don't know a whole lot about Sports Duchess, uh, but uh, I'll be curious to, to watch her in action. And uh, another one that uh, I think is, uh, is going to be intriguing from uh, his barn is Beach Moment. Uh, we saw a son of control the moment earlier today, Mark, finish a good second. Uh, we've only seen uh, a handful of his offspring here uh, today. But so far, what we've seen, we've liked. Yeah, that is the case. You know, with control the moment, do you look back at a horse that was just a star of two, and then at three, he won the Meadowlands pace and ultimately had his career cut short. Um, with we didn't hear a whole lot of chatter about some of the control the moments this winter. We heard a little bit more about some of those uh, first crops, but uh, for control the moment, so far so good. A decent showing as we move to the Philly. The number seven is cooler than Colby, just an $8,000 uh, yearling purchase. This one, a daughter of better than cheddar. And uh, some decent uh, pedigree to go on here. The damn sunbathers produced a couple of uh, 
$100,000 plus winners in her career, including St. Lad's Neptune, a winner of uh, $330,000. So cooler than Colby uh, from the outside post might be one to watch uh, in this field as well. And really all we have uh, to go on at this stage, Mark, is uh, pedigree. Uh, you look at uh, connections that uh, traditionally uh, have them ready to go at this time of, of year as well. And just uh, any reports that we have on, on training uh, prior to watching them today. But that is uh, the fun part about the baby races. Uh, us, like most people, are getting uh, our first look at these uh, horses behind the starting gate, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it certainly is. And I always think of the, the you know, the de best part is definitely when two, three months from now, you are seeing a race would have brought and you go back to the, when you watch the baby race for the first time sometimes you look at it and go you knew right from that moment other times you think i didn't see it so uh you can't always read too much into these first performances but it always gets the chatter going so they're moving to the gate now for the 10th qualifier let's introduce the field Qualifier, Qualifier number 10, number two, 10 year two year old pacing, pacing Phillies, Phillies lining, up. lining up. Bob McClure drives for Grace Hill. Here is the field. Number one is Sports Duchess, a daughter of sports writer owned by Leanne Murphy, also the breeder. Blake McIntosh trains. James McDonald drives. Two is Kim. He's watching Philly, owned by Wilma and James McKenzie, trained by Dr. Ian Moore. Trevor Henry will drive a $19,000 Harrisburg purchase. Three Sweet Coat, a Sweet Lou Philly, owned, trained, and driven by Gino Toscani, a $20,000 Lexington selected yearling sale buy. Number four is Grace Hill, owned by Tom Hill, trained by Dan Legacy. Bob McClure steals and always be Mickey Philly, that was a $75,000 Lexington purchase. Five Beach Moment is a Control the Moment Philly, owned by Hut Racing Stable. Mortgage Boys Stable and Blake McIntosh. McIntosh Trains, Doug McNair Drives, $17,000 Harrisburg Purchase. Six is Momo, Racing Hill, Philly, owned by the Stable Momo Group. Trainer Drivers, Anthony McDonald, $22,000 Ohio Yearling Purchase. And number seven is Cooler Than Colby, a Better Than Cheddar Philly, owned by Rebecca Williamson, along with Connie McTaggart, trained by Jeffrey Williamson. Jay Harris will drive an $8,000 yearling purchase at the London sale. So that's your field of seven two-year-old pacing fillies have assembled behind the starting gate. Gate is approaching the top of the stretch for qualifier number 10, 10 of 14 here today at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Starting gate swings into the stretch. Group of seven is picking up speed and here they come. And they're off and pacing. Sweet Coat is going to get the first call. Moving out well for Toscani. Also driving ahead, that is Momo. At the inside, Sports Duchess, she holds her ground nicely off the wings. Dipping in behind her is Kim. Then in mid-pack, it is Grace Hill, followed by Beach Moment. And the final one is cooler than Colby. They head into the first turn, and everybody is getting lined up now. And the top three coming away off the gate are going to end up being Momo, Sports Duchess, and Kim, a little bit early speed there from Sweet Coat, and she finds herself in fourth. The opening quarter was 31 and 2. Moving into the back stretch and now looping around to the top, this is Sports Duchess. So Sports Duchess will leapfrog Momo to grab the lead at 3 8. Then back in third, that is Kim. Making a rush now is Grace Hill, so she wants to get up a little closer for McClure. Backing up was Sweet Coat and going around that rival as they head up towards the half. The final two is beach moment and on the outside cooler than colby the half is hit in 101 and three so that was 30 and one in the second quarter the new leader is sports duchess sports duchess went second to first there in the second quarter and now she is pacing strong into the far turn momo is in second two lengths back then to grace hill who moved up into third inside fourth is kim on the outside as they head towards three quarters is beach moment on that one's cover is cooler than colby and sweet coat is the trailer Length and a half advantage here for Sports Duchess at three quarters and 130 and three. So she paced a 29 second third quarter. They're into the stretch. Here is Sports Duchess. Sports Duchess on top. Gonna have to try and fend off Momo who angles out now. And on the outside, here comes Grace Hill. And Grace Hill is looking to power on by. Sports Duchess trying to find more. She looks to hold on. In the center is Momo and Grace Hill on the outside. Good finish coming up here. The Phillies coming to the line. And Sports Duchess at the inside will hold on. 
Run. Second was Grace Hill. Third was Momo. Then it was Beach Moment. Fourth, Cooler Than Colby, Kim, and Sweet Coat. 159 and 1. Sports not just getting it done uh, for McIntosh and a McDonald. So James picked the right one. And uh, I know that was a bone of contention with uh, Blake when we talked to him Wednesday night. Of course, a little bit unjust. But, uh, uh, yeah, James uh, sticking with the, this filly, as mentioned, um, a homebred, my ideal, sports writer mating. And uh, I'm sure uh, both Blake and James would like what they saw here, 159 and 1. And the one that James picked off of, uh, Grace Hill, really good runner-up and uh, closing well at the end. That $75,000 yearling with uh, excellent final quarter speed as well. But uh, there we go. Sports writer Mark, uh, his third winner of the morning session. So it looks like we're going to see uh, his stamp all over the Ontario Sire Stakes program again in 2020. Uh, that's the case, it appears, with Sports Dutch is holding on there. Got to give her credit for that performance because they were coming in. Momo didn't go away. And Grace Hill, I talked about it before the race went when I saw Bob McClure was going to drive her. We knew he wasn't going to hurt her or wouldn't probably be too aggressive in the early going. But in that second quarter, they were sitting pretty far off. And a few of them knew they had to get moving. And he got her up close. And on the outside there, she was pacing pretty strong through the line to come up just short. The margin of victory would be about a half ahead. So And uh, not a bad mile. He's home 28 and 3. Good back half in this conditions for Sports Dutch. Getting a look at uh, Qualifier 11 coming up next. And uh, more two year old Philly Pacers will be facing the starting gate here. Field of seven uh, will get set to go postward. Uh, the number two in the field, she's a Sassy Beach, Sunshine Beach Philly. Uh, Kenny Middleton. Uh, track announcer, of course, the voice here at Woodbine at Mohawk Park. Uh, I sent out a starter earlier uh, on the card, and he's got another one here in this filly. Uh, I saw a picture of her posted on social media a few weeks back, and uh, really eye-catching looking uh, filly uh, in that photo. Lady Marina is one that uh, Kenny campaigned, an art colony mayor, and uh, this is the first full from that one, and she gets post two with Louis Philibois set to do the driving in this spot. The number three next door neighbors uh, needing off the grid. Uh, this one sent out by uh, the tandem of Blake McIntosh and James McDonald. And uh, James is listed on a couple in here, so we'll await uh, those changes. And Mark will get those for us. But this one, uh, daughter of Warwee Needy from Ingrid Hanover. And uh, Ingrid Hanover, the dam of uh, a decent competitor by the name of Better Moon on Over, winner of close to $100,000 uh, in that one's career. So post three for that one. And uh, next door neighbor to there uh, outside, Avonlea Sealster, daughter of state treasurer. He's had a winning credit already uh, on the program today. Uh, Straos Mayor Angelina Sealster is the dam, and she's produced a couple of $100,000 winners in her career. John Pentland, who's, uh, of course, uh, the campaigner of a very notable uh, OSS performer, Powerful Chris, sends this one out and teams up with driver Bob McClure. So we'll head back up to Mark. I think he's got the rundown from race 10 just completed. Here's the order of finish from the 10th qualifier. Number one, Sports Duchess was the winner. Number two, Kim was six. Number three, Sweet Coat, seventh. Number four, Grace Hill was second. Number five, Beach Moment, fourth. Number six, Momo, third. And number seven, Cooler Than Colby was fifth. One, six, seven, two, four, three, five on the bottom. Fractions were 31 and two, 101 and three, 130 and three, 159 and one for the winner. Number one, Sports Duchess. Side of the gate in this spot will be Sarone Sealster, uh, another one uh, sired by State Treasurer from the Shadow Play, uh, Mayor Shadows Wonder. Ian Moore owns and does the driving. Uh, wife Nancy co owns with Michael Goldberg and uh, son Tyler Moore. That's what a $15,000 a yearling purchase from the uh, London selected sale. And Sarone Sealster. 
uh, just the second full from the mare, Shadows Wonder. They're getting set to step out onto the track, and uh, yeah, that wind mark, it uh, really has held up. I thought it would uh, die down. Uh, fortunately, the temperature's gone up to make it bearable for uh, folks like myself sitting outside today, but hey, I am not complaining. I'm just uh, very happy to be here and happy that we are uh, we are racing and we're getting our first look at uh, these exciting looking youngsters. Absolutely. We got no complaints. We're glad to bring it to everybody at home who, for many of you, would be here on a morning like this to see the babies. But now, but hopefully we'll get people back to the track very soon. <laughs> Off the grid will be driven by Doug McNair. Mr. Tyler Moore will do the driving. So all seven are out on the track now as we get set for this 11th formal fire. And looking on paper here, trying to pick one out that maybe will catch my ear. How about let's try the Yoster. I know we talked a little bit about this one here. I think it's Philly, the state treasurer, was we be all rolling for the first crops. So the gate, the gate is, is rolling, rolling for qualifier, for qualifier number, number 11. 11. Doug McNair drives three, needing off the grid. Tyler Moore drives seven, Sarone Sealster. Here is the field. One, a mini, is a sports rider filly owned by Tess Waxman, David Morgan. Trainer drivers, Isaac Waxman. $8,000 London yearling sale buy. Two, she's a sassy beach, daughter of Sunshine Beach, owned by Ken Middleton and Bill Galvin. Trained by Ken Middleton, the driver is Louis Philippe Bois. Three, needing off the grid, a war we needy filly owned by Kim and Dan Surgent. They're also the breeders. Blake McIntosh trains Doug McNarrow Drive. Four, Avalene Sealster is a state treasurer filly owned by Ellie Bale, John Pentland, Catherine Canapini, trained by John Pentland. Bob McClure drives $18,000 London buy. Five, ATM treasurer, state treasurer filly owned and bred by Janice Hubbard, who also trains Paul McDonnell Drives. Six, Well and Down, a well said filly owned by the stable Well and Down Group. Trained by Anthony McDonald, James McDonald drives, $6,000 blooded horse sale purchase, and seven Sarone Sealster, state treasurer, filly owned by Nancy Moore, Michael Goldberg, and Tyler Moore. Ian Moore trains, Tyler Moore drives, $15,000 London yearling sale purchase. Gate to the top of the stretch. Picking up speed, two-year-old pacing Phillies group of seven. Here they come. And they're off and pacing. A mini from the inside is able to shoot ahead for Waxman. From the middle of the group, it's Avonlea Sealster. And in there is Wellen down. Far outside, Sarone Sealster will be looking for a seat in mid pack. She's a sassy beach, unhurried in the early going. Will get away in fifth on her back, needing off the grid. And the trailer is ATM Treasurer. Into the first turn they go. And a mini started from post one and is number one as they head to the opening quarter. It's on the board in 31. And four. A mini is the leader. She's a daughter of sports rider. She fronts the field by about a length and three quarters. Make that two and a bit. Racing in second is Avonlea Sealster. Then in third is Well and Down. Five lengths back to Sarone Sealster, who is in fourth. Racing in fifth is She's a Sassy Beach, followed six by Needing Off the Grid. And seventh is ATM Treasurer. So they're spaced out a little bit as they approach the midway point. A mini continues to show the way. 31 and four was the opening quarter. And the half is hit in 102 and 1. Going into the far turn, and off a 102 and 1 half, a mini is in full control, and the lead begins to grow here in the third quarter. It's out now to 5, almost 6 lengths as they go by 5 eighths. In second, Avonlea Sealster, then well and down is in third. Break of about 5 lengths going back to Sarone Sealster, followed by She's a Sassy Beach, 2 and a half lengths to Needing Off the Grid, and the final one as they come to 3 quarters, that is ATM Treasure, 3 quarter time, 1.30, and one. So they're into the stretch, and it is all a mini. A mini is on top and is looking to finish this one off strong. Went a big third quarter, and it's all a mini. 
A mini leading by double digits with less than an eighth of a mile to go. Well and down on the outside is trying to get by Avonlea Sealster for second. Then coming along is She's a Sassy Beach in fourth. All oh, a mini, a mini wins this one. Finishing in second will be Avonlea Sealster over Well and Down. She's a Sassy Beach needing off the grid. Sarone Sealster and ATM Treasure 158 and 4. A mini making short work of uh, this group, the fourth uh, sports writer rookie to win this morning, 58 and four, 56 and three in the back half in doing it. Uh, Mark McKelvey, the most impressive performance we've seen this morning. I put it right up there, I think. That was a real good looking performance. And you could see as soon as that hit, this one kicked it in take off and being asked a little bit at the line she go ahead and take off that back half like you mentioned 56 and 3 that's right up there for the best performance we've seen so a mini uh, as mentioned giving sports writer his uh, fourth winner this morning through 11 races uh, three more qualifiers uh, left to go we thank you for uh, tuning in again you're watching coverage of the baby races here from woodbine mohawk park thank you to cosa tv and uh, of course uh, the woodbine entertainment group broadcast team for helping us uh, put this together with the partnership of uh, hoofbid.com and uh, all of our wonderful partners uh, great to have you uh, tuning in today uh, it's been fun to watch so far and uh, as mentioned sports writer he is uh, become uh, Mr. OSS in, in recent years and uh, certainly looks like uh, he uh, will be well represented when uh, stakes time uh, rolls around here in the not too distant future. His fourth winner uh, early today on the qualifying session. Amini had post one and uh, made that big move in the back stretch and uh, from there uh, the end result never really in doubt. Wind continues to uh, pick up dramatically here again. Uh, it's been uh, quite a day weather-wise. Uh, cool temperatures and high winds for the most part here this morning. So uh, it makes a 56 and 3 back half, I think. Uh, just that much more impressive when you consider that and factor it in. Once again, let's go back up to Mark for the run down, the complete finish order from that 11th race. Then we'll take a look ahead to qualifier number 12. Order a finish from the 11th qualifier. Number one, a mini was the winner. Number two, She's a Sassy Beach was fourth. Number three, Needing Off the Grid was fifth. Number four, Evelyn Sealster was second. Number five, ATM Treasure seventh. Number six, Well and Down third. And number seven, Sarone Sealster was sixth. One, four, five, two, seven, three, six is your order of finish. Fractions were 31 and four, 102 and one, 130 and one, 158 and four for the winner, number one, a mini, a daughter of sports writer owned by Tess Waxman and David Morgan. Trainer driver was Isaac Waxman. Waxman, an $8,000 London yearling sale purchase. So it will be a field of eight coming up next in uh, qualifier number 12. More two-year-old Philly Pacers facing the starting gate in this uh, contest. And, uh, we had our COSA preview show on Wednesday. And uh, one horse that we had a look at uh, as part of that, we were looking at uh, many of the, the morning training sessions uh, from nearby here at uh, Mohawk Park and Blake McIntosh and uh, one of his sets was going with uh, a filly named Twin Bee Sunkist, trained by Francis Dumichel and uh, she'll be starting here and Blake uh, commented on Wednesday that uh, this is a nice filly and one to keep your eye on as well. She's a Sunshine Beach daughter from uh, the Western Hanover Mayor, Western Heat, a $20,000 yearling purchase, and we'll get Bob McClure in the driver's seat uh, today from post one. Next door neighbor, French Shaker, and Mark uh, Trainer Chantel Mitchell, hoping to have another alley corn on her hands. Speaking of that filly, uh, pretty nice uh, debut that we saw from her just the other day. What did you think? Yesterday, second time she went, missions for June, and I thought Allie Corn be too much into them, but I thought she looked really good yesterday, and can't wait to see what she'll do this year. Um, you know, she's that little filly, just uh, took the world by storm last year, and 
you know, here coming back as a three-year-old, I think we'll see big things from here locally get a chance to really go up against those top grand circuit fields again. connections uh, shelled out twenty two thousand for this one and the mayor my little artist has uh, produced a, a pair of hundred thousand dollar winners so far in her career captain's made just next door from post three a daughter of captain treacherous uh, the mayor made in shade the camlock mayor has uh, Produced a few that are, are certainly familiar faces. Shady City, a $500,000 winner. And uh, Shades of Bay, who's been a hard-hitting performer uh, here on this circuit in recent years and uh, well over $300,000 on his card. This one, a $25,000 purchase. Harry Poulton training for the stable and uh, Anthony listed to do the driving here today. A uh, couple of doors down, another sports writer, Mark, that uh, might be one to keep your eye on here. Her name, Smile, it's Friday. Yeah, we'll see what uh, sports writer comes through this time because it's been uh, a lot of fun to watch them here this morning. They had a real good go of it. Another one for trainer Blake McIntosh, Doug McNair will dry. So the gate begins to roll. Looks like we'll scratch number one, Twin B Sunkiss. So we won't get to see that filly here this morning. Everybody else, as they are programmed, is going to line up. So let's meet the field for the 12. To your pacing, Phillies qualifier, Philly qualifier number 12, number scratch one, Twin B Sunkissed. Number two, starting from the rail, is French Shaker. Better's Delight, Philly owned by Windermere Stable. Robert Muscara, William Rochetti, and Tanya Rochetti. Trained by Chantel Mitchell. The driver is Louis-Philippe Bois, $22,000 Harrisburg purchase. Three captains made. It's a captain treacherous filly owned by the stable captain's maid. Trained by Harry Poulton. Anthony McDonald drives $25,000 Lexington by. Four, bottom of the ninth. He's watching filly owned by Rod Boyd and Jefferson Davis. Trained by Boyd. Mike Saftick drives $13,000 Harrisburg purchase. Five, smile. It's Friday. Sports writer filly owned by William McKay, David Sirwatic, Robin Watts. Trained by Blake McIntosh, Doug McNair is in the sulky. Six fit to rule the Royal Majesty filly owned by Hut Racing Stable, Stuart McIntosh, Michael Lindley, and Blake McIntosh. McIntosh trains James McDonald drives $20,000 London purchase. Seven, Lady Arthur. Arthur Blue Chip filly owned by Dr. Ian Moore, RG McGroove Limited, Serge Savard. Trained by Ian Moore, he'll also do the driving. And number eight is Salzbrook Easy. Better than Cheddar filly owned by Rebecca Williamson, Laverne Turnbull. Trained by Jeffrey Williamson, Jay Harris drives a $10,000 London by. Gate is into the stretch. Two year old pacing Phillies picking up speed, and here they come. And they're off and pacing. Captain's Maid is ready to rock, and she fires from the inside. Also driving is Lady Arthur, so those two will meet as they head past us for the first time. French Shaker is in behind in third. Mid-pack now fit to rule, will be looking for a seat. Then it is bottom of the ninth, followed by Smile, it's Friday, and Salzbrook easy to the rear of the field. Into the first turn they go, and Captain's Maid is up top for Anthony McDonald. His Captain's Maid leading by two lengths. Lady Arthur races in second. Fit to rule hasn't found a seat yet. Might have a spot there now to settle in third opening quarter was 31 seconds flat moving into the back stretch and they're following captain's maid who leads by close to two lengths tightening up now is lady arthur from in second fit to rule is in third and this group really starts to bunch up a bit now as they go by three eighths in fourth is french shaker fifth was bottom of the ninth then it is smile it's friday and the last one is salzbrook easy so as they were tightening up we get some action now fit to rule had to go in the second quarter and is able to sweep up to the lead fit to rule will touch down up top as they go past the half in 102 flat. So that's back to back 31 second splits. New leader it is. Fit to rule. Daughter of Royal Majesty on top by a length and a half. Captain's made in second. Underway now comes Lady Arthur for Moore and she's coming quickly here in the third quarter. French Shaker is about five lengths off the lead in fourth. Two and a half lengths then to bottom of the ninth with the final two at the back being Smile It's Friday and Salzbrook Easy. On the outside Lady Arthur takes a short lead. Fit to rule looks to battle back at the inside and then we'll see if the early leader captain's maid's got something for the stretch drive three quarter time 131 off the turn in into the stretch and lady arthur is a leader now it's lady arthur by a length and a half fit to rules back in second clear racetrack now shown for captain's maid far outside french shakers trying to finish off her mile strong so to his bottom of the ninth but nobody is going to touch now lady arthur and it's the arthur blue chip philly lady arthur to win finishing in second will be captain's maid no might have been french shakers 
Ranger. Captain's Maid was third. Then it was bottom of the ninth. Fit to rule. Salzbrook easy and smile. It's Friday, 159 and four. Another impressive effort, and uh, I believe the only one that we have uh, of the 14 races today sired by Arthur Blue Chip, or there might be uh, one other, but uh, very impressive. 57 and four back half speed, 28 and four on the end, and uh, made it look pretty easy. Arthur Blue Chip uh, was a horse uh, that, that raced for Ian Moore. Mark, and you remember a few years back, uh, had his career cut short by injury. A uh, beautiful animal, uh, raced at the very top level of the sport, uh, had that eye-catching gait to him. And uh, the daughter, although not as big and robust as the sire, uh, kind of has a similar gait, nice big reach to her. That's what I thought. I love the way that she paced up there on the far turn, up to battle for the lead and coming into the stretch. She very professional coming through to the line to get the victory. Arthur Blue Chip, you mentioned this was the... We see here the one of the qualifiers. Well, in total, there's 13 eligible to race this year. So, Arthur Blue Chip, well represented. It's Arthur made him. So, that's uh, now 12 in the books this afternoon. Just a couple of more left to go here this afternoon. Uh, looking forward to our final two qualifying events uh, here this morning. Again, you're watching on uh, COSA TV, various uh, different social media platforms. Wonderful to have you uh, with us here again and looking forward to um, the last couple today and uh, another uh, two or three weeks of uh, baby races for the rookies here at Woodbine Mohawk Park as uh, racing is now in full swing and we uh, can finally start looking ahead to uh, the stake schedule. Slightly altered stake schedule this season, certainly uh, two-year-olds not impacted to, to the same extent as the three-year-olds and older horses. But uh, yeah, it is wonderful to be getting close to uh, getting back into stakes uh, season once again. Two more left to go here this morning. 13th race coming up. Another group of two-year-old Philly Pacers will face the gate this time around, and it will be a field of seven uh, going to the post in qualifier number 13. Uh, some of the horses that we'll keep an eye on here include the number one sports check, uh, daughter of sports writer Doug McNair, uh, scheduled to drive here for Blake McIntosh. Uh, the mayor, Lions Mandy, was the mother of uh, spring, or sporting the look, I should say, sporting the look, a winner of 270,000 in his career, and a horse that uh, came very close to winning the Battle of Waterloo back in 2014. Uh, finished second that year to Go Daddy Go and was uh, was a good one. So sports check uh, from that same family. Post one here, Blake McIntosh trainee was a $15,000 a yearling purchase. Next door neighbor, Ariana Grandio, also from uh, Blake's barn. Uh, the mayor, CNBC, and a good one herself, a $220,000 winner and um, has produced a, a couple of uh, decent raceway horses to this point in her career. This one, a $31,000 purchase. Uh, bet you love me from post three, Mark, trying to give better than Cheddar his third winner on today's qualifying program. Yeah, and before we continue on with this 13th qualifier, we'll give you results from the Order of finish from qualifier number 12. Number one was Scratch. Number two, French Shaker was second. Number three, Captain's Made third. Number four, bottom of the ninth was fourth. Number five, Smile It's Friday seventh. Number six, Fit to Rule fifth. Number seven, Lady Arthur the winner. And number eight, Salzbrook Easy was sixth. Top to bottom, Scratch two, three, four, seven, five, one, six. Fractions were 31, 102, 131, 159, and four. And more with another uh, pupil here in qualifier 13, and he'll be in the driver's seat as well behind number seven, Andra Day. She's a daughter of Shadow Play from an art major mare, Frame Worthy, owned by the Let It Ride Stables. Bottom Line Racing of Florida also share in the ownership, and this one was bred by a blue chip farm of Walkill, New York. And Ian. Uh, 
Doesn't drive a whole lot anymore, Mark, but uh, certainly likes to sit up behind them in, uh, in qualifying and, uh, and knows them well, obviously, and, and has them ready to go. He's one of the trainers that, when it comes to this day, uh, you know they're ready to rock. Absolutely. That is for sure. And I think there is something to that about a trainer that still sits behind their horses in the baby races that first time, gets a feel for them, learns maybe a little more. And, um, typically, then you'll see next time ago, they'll get handed off to somebody else to take the reins. But uh, we'll catch our, we'll see what we get from Andrew Day here, who the second dam is Hanover. And if I'm not mistaken, we saw Hanover um, had one in earlier today. So the family well represented here this morning. And uh, most of the stallions uh, in this race have had a winning uh, credit already on the program uh, today. A Sunshine Beach uh, has, better than Cheddar, sports writer, of course. Uh, but uh, we're getting a look at uh, one of only one or two by uh, So Surreal today. You talk about underrated stallions. I think this guy fits the bill. Uh, he, he's a really really uh i think underrated but quality stallion and uh his presence especially in new york has been felt in the last uh, two or three seasons yeah it has and that's something that i think that sentiment is starting to echo through the sport quite a bit where uh people are recognizing that he has the potential or he's at least turning out some real quality horses and uh as mentioned, in New York Sire Stakes, uh, you know, they're feeling that presence of so surreal as of late. Pick from French Licks, a horse that stands out, who could be a real player as a four year old this season. Some of the uh, real big qualifying mile from that the border. Make his horses are all on the track. Like the only change will be number six, Awesome Hill, is going to have Bob McClure, everything else is as listed all right we are just about set to go with qualifier 13 we will take just a moment here to uh let the horses assemble behind the starting gate and then we'll pick them up on camera in a moment and mark will have the introductions and the race call of qualifier 13 just two more left to go on this Friday morning from Woodbine, Mohawk Park. Qualifier number 13, two-year-old pacing fillies lining up. Number six, Awesome Hill, make the driver Bob McClure. Here's the field. Number one is Sports Check, a sports writer filly owned by Frugal Not Cheap Stable, trained by Blake McIntosh, Doug McNair will drive, $15,000 Lexington purchase. Two, Ariana Grandeo is a Roll with Joe filly owned by 30 plus stable Blake McIntosh. He trains James McDonald drives $31,000 Lexington buy. Three, Bet You Love Me is a better than Cheddar filly owned by Rebecca Williamson and Connie McTaggart. Trained by Jeffrey Williamson, Jay Harris drives a $12,000 London purchase. Four, So Admiral is a So Surreal filly owned by the stable Array So Admirable. Anthony McDonald is the trainer driver. $11,500 $11, Goshen purchase. Five is Clover, sports writer Philly, owned by Larry Kelson, Robert Walton, trained by William Hofacker. The driver is Louis Philippe Bois. Six in this field is Awesome Hill, Sunshine Beach Philly, owned and bred by Tom Hill. Dan Legacy trains, Bob McClure drives, and seven is Andre Day, shadow play Philly, owned by Let It Ride Stables and Bottom Line Racing, trained and driven by Dr. Ian Moore. That's your field for the 13th, starting gate, rolling to the top of the stretch. It'll be a field of seven. Gate swings into the stretch, pacing Phillies lined up, picking up speed, and here they come. And they're off and pacing. Andre Day is going to fire from the outside, coming from the middle. That is so admirable. And then crossing over is Awesome Hill at the inside. Sports check, though. She is really holding her ground, and she's into the upper half. Getting away fifth is Ariana Grandeo. And then the last two, Bet You Love Me and Clover. Going to the opening quarter, Andra Day. She started on the outside, crosses over in front of her six rivals, and she'll take them through the opening quarter in 31 and 3. 
So Andre Day is the leader. She's a daughter of Shadow Play, and she leads by a little more than a length and a half. They straighten out into the backstretch. In second is so admirable. Two and a half lengths going back to Sports Check in third. Fourth is Awesome Hill. Then racing in fifth is Ariana Grandeo. Four lengths then to the final two. That is Bet You Love Me and Clover. Stretching out the lead in the second quarter. This is Andre Day. She went 31-3 and three in the opening quarter. And she's going to roll them past the half in a minute and three-fifths. So she ramped it up there. 29 seconds in the second quarter. They're going into the far turn. And Andre Day is on a lead of about seven or eight lengths. In second is so admirable. Racing in third is Sports Check. Five lengths going back then to Awesome Hill, who is in fourth. Right behind that one is Ariana Grandeo. Followed by Bet You Love Me, who gets underway. And last is Clover. Andra Day coming to three quarters. Her lead starting to shrink maybe just a little bit. As so admirable is about five off the top at three quarters in 129 and one. So turning for home off a 28 and three third quarter. This is Andra Day. She'll try and close it out. So admirable is trying to make things interesting. So too is Sports Check. They come to the eighth pole, and although the lead is still three lengths, doesn't look like they're going to get much closer. It is Andra Day, and Andra Day here still with the lead, getting in a little closer. Closer sports check. Andre Day is the winner of qualifier 13. She wins by a length and a half. Sports check was second. Third went to So Admirable. Then it was Awesome Hill, followed by Ariana Grandeo. Bet you love me. And Clover, 159 flat. So Ian Moore putting on a driving clinic. Well, hey, maybe that's a stretch, but hey, back-to-back -back winners here this morning during baby race action, and this time clicking with Andra Day, the daughter of Shadow Play, as mentioned, co-owned by the Let It Ride Stables and Bottom Line Racing of Florida. Ian uh, trains and uh, does the driving as well. So a uh, good day at the office for Ian. I uh, had some starters earlier this morning, some really more high-profile starters, actually, probably based on you know what they uh, paid for them and and the pedigree but uh, here it's a couple of uh, lesser priced horses that uh, come through for him later in the day yeah it's funny how those go if you're a trainer that's sending out several you could have some highs and lows in the day and i think this day he's gonna well for i think earlier on in the day and then a little disappointment however it is just that first time don't want to read too much into it and there's obviously a lot of tweaking that can go on and we know what a great trainer even more is so definitely count on all the ones we saw here today to come back better the next time out but i think he's got to be real happy with these last two a victory there for andre day maybe getting a little tired towards the end of it but she went a pretty good middle half uh, all things considered and wins it by maybe just a little under a length and a half so just one more to go as we uh, get ready to wrap up uh, today's first full day of baby racing action here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. It will be a full uh, field of eight to go postward here. Another group of two-year-old Philly Pacers squaring off. And uh, good looking group uh, on paper, uh, a little mix of, of everything, uh, some mid-priced yearlings, some bargain basements, and some homebreds. Uh, number one in the field will be alumni Sealster. So Ian Moore uh, trains and drives, and he'll be looking to sweep the final three races this morning. Uh, this one by State Treasurer from the unraced mare Atlantic Sealster. Unraced, but uh, has been a good producer so far. A couple of names you might remember or uh, uh, know well on this circuit, uh, Cat, and another one called Deb, both $100,000 uh, plus winners. Uh, a few doors down, we'll see Sunshine in May, uh, Sunshine Beach Philly, uh, racing for Anthony McDonald and Kevin McMaster, uh, the first full from Camlock Mare, Laura May, and uh, this one was uh, bred by Amy and William Haggerty of London, Ontario, and Sunshine in May occupies post four. So a couple of the horses, we'll talk a little bit more about the rest of the field in a moment, but I believe Mark has the complete finish order from race 13 first. Here's the order of finish from the 13th qualifier. Number one, Sports Check was second. Number two, Ariana Grandeo was fifth. Number three, Bet You Love Me, sixth. Number four, So Admirable, third. Number five, Clover, seventh. Number six, Awesome Hill, fourth. And number seven, Andre Day was the winner. Top to bottom, two, five, six, three, seven, four, one on the bottom. Fractions were 31 and three, a minute and three fifths, 
129 and 1, 159 flat for the winner. Number seven, Andra Day, a daughter of Shadow Play, owned by Let It Ride Stables and Bottom Line Racing, trained and driven to victory by Dr. Ian Moore. Enjoy the thrill of the race anywhere, anytime with HPIBet.com. Join for free and use your smartphone, tablet, or PC to watch and wager when you can't be at the track. Stream live racing from over 450 tracks. Bet with ease from anywhere. It's safe and secure. Get rewards, race alerts, tips, and more. For a limited time, get $100 when you become a member. Plus, one month free live race streaming and your first bet is on us. Go to HPIBet.com to join for free today. Getting set to wrap up uh, the morning session uh, here. It's been a wonderful uh, morning so far, despite the weather. Uh, I'm hanging in, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really been a lot of fun to see these youngsters in action, and uh, can't wait to watch the project. Uh, how they uh, proceed from here and uh, you know they'll be back I'm sure a lot of them next week for a second go round before they uh, dip their toe into pair mutual action and uh, we look forward to seeing them so we've got another field of eight to cap things off here uh, this afternoon we talked about a couple of them uh, another one that uh, I'll be keeping an eye on is number five game of shadows another shadow play filly from uh, the Camlock mayor Cheyenne Ava and she uh, produced a good one in Shane Adam, a winner of close to a half a million dollars and has uh, produced a number of good raceway horses. Uh, Richard Moreau, we're used to seeing him send out uh, a plethora of starters here on a Friday or a Saturday night, but uh, haven't seen as much of him here this morning, but he's got one here in the finale. Again, this $21,000 yearling purchase will be handled uh, this morning by Louis Philippe Bois. And uh, toward the outside of the gate, Marry Me Now Hanover, an art major filly from Mary Matkelin, that daughter of Matt Scooter, has had a tremendous production record over her career. Uh, several uh, high-priced winners, Mary Matt Hanover comes to mind, uh, Lady Matt Gillane, Mears Hanover, just to name a few. And uh, this one sent out by trainer Blake McIntosh, James McDonald listed to drive a $35,000 yearling purchase. Uh, Mark, uh, from your vantage point, you get to have a look at them when they come out onto the track. Uh, anyone in particular in this last group that uh, that catches your eye out on the track? I'll tell you one that's a little fired up to go. That's the two Carwin's Lucky Luna. Looks like Paul McNeil's wrestling with her a little move, but I'm going to keep my eye on this final qualifier of the morning. On the Ian Moore training, you'll see if you can make it three in a row to finish it off. Alumni Sealster from the rail. So they're moving in behind the gate. Here they are for the 14th and final. Material pacing Phillies for qualifier number 14. It's a field of eight. Number one is Alumni Sealster, state treasurer Philly owned by Sally McDonald and Paul McDonald. Dr. Ian Moore is the trainer driver, a $50,000 London yearling sale by. Number two, Carwin's Lucky Luna, sports writer Philly, owned and bred by Carwin Stables, trained by Dennis Caruana. Paul McDonnell will drive. Three is Sunshine Nelly, Sunshine Beach, Philly owned by Dan Legacy. He's also the trainer. Bob McClure Steels will steer a $13,000 Harrisburg purchase. For Sunshine in May is a Sunshine Beach filly owned by the stable Sunshine in May. Trained by Kevin McMaster, Anthony McDonald will drive. Five in this group is Game of Shadows. Shadow Play filly owned by 187-6472 Ontario and Louis Philippe Wa. Richard Morrow trains. Louis Philippe Wa drives. $21,000 London buy. Six a better game. Better than Cheddar filly owned by Hut Racing Stable. Blake McIntosh, Joe Nislek, Ridgeway Racing. Blake McIntosh trains. James McDonald will drive. Seven is Chief's Dream Girl. Sunshine Beach Philly owned by High Stakes Incorporated and LSC Stables. Jack Moise of trains. Chris Christopher who drives. And to complete the field, number eight is Marry Me Now Hanover. An art major Philly owned by Blake McIntosh, Ozzie McKay, and Jesse Valor. McIntosh trains. Doug McNair will drive. $35,000 Harrisburg purchase. 14th qualifier. It's the finale here on this Friday at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Two-year-old pacing Phillies are picking up speed, and here they come. And they're off 
And pacing in the Friday finale. And from the middle, there is a better game who is forging herself towards the lead. Powering out from the middle is Game of Shadows. And then at the rail, it is Alumni Sealster. Dropping into fourth will be Sunshine Nelly. Then getting lined up, Carwin's Lucky Luna. Followed by Sunshine in May. Chief's Dream Girl and Marry Me Now Hanover. That's your group of eight as they move into the first turn. And a better game is clearing to the top in front of Game of Shadows. Coming to the opening quarter. And it's on the board in 30 and a fifth. So 30 and a fifth for that opening quarter. That is courtesy of a better game. Better than Cheddar Philly. Leads this group of eight. We had a first term breaker. That was number four, Sunshine in May. They're moving up the backside, coming to three eights. And the leader is a better game. Racing in second is Game of Shadows. Then in third is Alumni Sealster. Racing fourth, it is Sunshine Nelly. Fifth is Carwin's Lucky Luna. Then it's a break of two and a half lengths coming back to Chief's Dream Girl, who is being followed by Marry Me Now Hanover. And resetting after the first term break is Sunshine in May. The half is hit in one 101 and 2. So off a 30 and 1 opener, they went 31 and 1 in the second quarter. And in control, this group is a better game. It's a better game. And James McDonald showing the way into the far turn. Now with a rush, here comes Alumni Sealster, another one on the move for Moore, and looking to sweep up to take the lead before three quarters. Now third is Game of Shadows. Three lengths going back to Sunshine Nelly in fourth. Two length break, then to Carwin's Lucky Luna. Final three is Chief's Dream Girl. Marry Me Now, Hanover, and Sunshine in May. And on even terms, it's a better game and alumni sealster at three quarters in 131 flat so they turn for home and on the outside alumni sealster is trying to power on by a better game who looks to find more at the inside a better game outside alumni sealster getting a little steppy as sunshine nelly in third and now goes off stride so it's down to these two 16th to go a better game at the inside continues to battle tough but alumni sealster's got a head up in front they're coming to the line and coming back at the inside to get it was a better game alumni sealster was second. Game of Shadows third. Then it was Chief's Dream Girl. Carwin's Lucky Luna. Sunshine Nelly followed by Marry Me Now Hanover and Sunshine in May. 159 and 3. A better game. Battles back. Real good horse race to cap off uh, today's 14 race qualifying program. Alumni Sealster and a better game and uh, pretty much what was a stretch long duel and uh, it was a better game battling back uh, game I think a good word to describe that effort Mark. I would agree with that. Didn't want to make the call too early. It looked like he too many of them battled back and it looked like a lot of from what we've seen in the last two qualifiers from the Trinese. It looked like Alumni Steelster was going to close that one. Full marks to a better game. She's a six full from a Pandarosa mare named She's Game. I remember that one. Came onto the scene in the PA Sire Stakes. She had a rookie campaign. Ultimately went on to make $245,000 in her career. And this is her six full. And a nice performance by a better game to take our final qualifier. So a busy day in the books and a real nice way uh, to cap things off here uh, today. We'll give Mark a moment to check with the uh, judges and get the official rundown and finish order from that uh, 14th and final. But yeah, good day um, here overall. Some of the highlights, uh, again, sports writer, of course, a staple of the Ontario Sire Stakes program, sending out four winners uh, this morning as part of the 14 race package. Uh, Ian Moore had back-to-back -back winners, training and driving uh, today, almost made it uh, a clean sweep of the last three there, but fell just short in the finale. Uh, Sire, uh, better than Cheddar, good day for him. Three winners uh, on the 14 race uh, session. Uh, Sylvain Filion teaming up with trainer Wayne McGean and Three Caper Stable for a pair of winners uh, today. And the Stable.ca had uh, a pair of winners uh, earlier on the 14 race card and uh, a couple of other uh, good finishes as well. So um, some, some busy conditioners today. Blake McIntosh, one of the busiest, uh, capped off a pretty good day uh, for his outfit as well with a victory in the finale. 159-3, and three, a 28-3 and three final quarter to do it. Uh, wind and cool temperatures was also, I think, the storyline today. So uh, again, uh, if you were tuning in today, you certainly want to have that information in mind when these horses uh, do make their debut uh, behind the starting gate in paramutual action. 
Uh, you don't see that on the race program, but uh, wind certainly a factor today, and it was uh, a fairly substantial headwind in the home stretch, which makes uh, those races where horses paced uh, 28, 29 second final quarters fairly impressive. So that uh, will cap it uh, off for us here this afternoon. Uh, I believe we're going to head back up to Mark and uh, see if he's got that final rundown from race 14. Here's the order of finish from the 14th and final qualifier. Number one, Alumni Steelster was second. Number two, Carwin's Lucky Luna, fifth. Number three, Sunshine Nelly, sixth. Number four, Sunshine in May was eighth. Number five, Game of Shadows, third. Number six, A Better Game, the winner. Number seven, Chief's Dream Girl, fourth. And number eight, Marry Me Now Hanover was seventh. Rechecking top to bottom, two, five, six, eight, three, one, four, seven. Fractions were 30 and one, 101 and two, 131, 159 and three. For the winner, number six, A Better Game. A two-year-old filly by Better Than Cheddar, owned by Hut Racing Stable, Blake McIntosh and John Nislick, trained by Blake McIntosh and driven to victory by James McDonald, winning the 14th and final qualifier. So one more time, uh, we want to bring in uh, Mark McKelvey. Uh, Mark, we uh, practiced our social distancing today to the extreme, and uh, it worked out pretty well. It's been a lot of fun. Great job uh, describing the action uh, for us here today. And uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. We hope uh, to do it again next weekend, uh, maybe the next couple of weeks as we watch uh, these guys come back maybe for a second time and then some other new faces emerge. But let's turn our attention to this weekend here at uh, Woodbine Mohawk Park. Uh, what can we look forward to over the next couple of nights here? Yeah, well, of course, this would traditionally be the time of the year for the Pepsi North America Cup. Not the case this year, of course, with that marquee and $1 million event moved back to August 29th. But there's some good action to look forward to this weekend. I'm very excited about tonight's preferred pace. We saw Boda C the Ontario Sire Stakes champion last year. She came out for her four-year-old debut a week ago and was just dominant, winning in 150 flat. Tonight in the Mare's Preferred, she'll look to go back-to-back. -back. I think Sunny D's going to have something to say about that. She was really flying at the end of her mile. Those two had a great rivalry last year. They've just moved it up to the Mare's Preferred, and all that means is they've got some new rivals. Kendall Sealster just went over the million-dollar mark last week. She now moves back up to the Preferred. So I'm looking forward to that contest in total 11 races tonight and 11 races tomorrow here at Mohawk Park. So lots to look forward to. We might not have the stakes action that we typically would in mid-June, but lots of three-year-olds on the card. And of course, uh, some real good preferred contests coming up over the next two nights. Post time is 7 p.m. Well, thanks again, Mark. Uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, if you're tuning in, if you haven't done so yet, uh, Great time to set yourself up with an HPI bet account. Very easy to do. Visit hpibet.com. Or if you're uh, a little bit newer to uh, the wagering side of the business, uh, try downloading the new Dark Horse app. Uh, very easy to use as well and getting rave reviews so far. So hope to see you out and about uh, this weekend. And uh, we look forward to hopefully doing this again next weekend we thank once again COSA Central Ontario Standard Bread Association for making this possible along with the Woodbine Entertainment Group and our partner uh, hoofbid.com and Ontario Racing. Uh, big thank you to all of them and uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully again one week from today. We want to enjoy the rest of your weekend and so long from Woodbine Mohawk Park in Campbellville, Ontario.